Alrighty. Alright, so last time where we left you, you guys off was with you guys going back to Alberzine after basically making your homestead in Adventus. After doing so, you went to Alberzine. Upon arrival, Grendridge, amongst yourselves, were taken in, where you met Benor Yulan, a judge there in Alberzine. He then spoke with you, found out that Denisine was alive. He then went and spoke with the headmaster. Um, he kind of interrogated you guys, asked you quite a bit of questions. Um, and then towards the end of your discussion with him when you guys were leaving, you saw Otto Trixis leave or enter while you were leaving, who you saw in the Contravents Holt when fighting Cassandra Volt. After doing so, you guys went throughout um, Alberzine looking for Cassandra's office, where Orem had a key to. While doing so, you found um, an item along with a note that she left for you. And then on your way out, you noticed that Aldor had been tailing you where you guys had a confrontation. After that happened, Gildor tried to throw down some magical patch that was a hole. And in failing in doing so, trapped everybody down in this hole where you basically watched him get out, where you counterspelled him, tried to provoke a fight. He didn't fall for it, where he walked away and you guys got out and then proceeded to leave Alberzine. And on your guys' way out, you guys saw this caravan that seemed to have been wrecked, taken off to the side of the road with two individuals that you guys found to be Grendridge and Denistine being tailed by nine or so assailants. You can see them shooting crossbolts and armed with swords running towards them where they have them now cornered in the runes where you guys have taken pursuit. And that's where we are going to pick up. So... With that, everybody give me initiative. Yay. Okay. What was this stuff? Initiative. All right, so anybody get over 20? No. <laughs> no. 15. 16. All right. Okay. What'd you get, Seth? A two. a two. Oh, geez. Let's go All right. So, what about uh, fuck this? Fourteen. Fourteen. Okay. Nine. Nine. All right. So to start out with, uh, Orem, as you look, as you guys turn around, riding now in your carriage, as you see everybody, it's about five p.m. Um, snow is still falling. You notice that your carriage is going through about three to four feet of snow, traversing quite heavily. You're moving or controlling it with Gildor's beast at the reins. Yeah. You're moving through. Are you stopping? You guys going in? What are you doing with the caravan? Um, Under your control. Yeah, he's moving it forward. Like, does that take direction and action? Anything like that? Um, yeah, this is this is your turn so we'll say i'll allow you like one free movement up to 20 feet okay and then you can after that if you want to turn stop do anything that'll be your action or if you wish to disembark i'll just say it's part of your movement okay um then i would like to move you said 20 feet mm -hmm. so is that right yep so 10 20 right so the gorilla would be here yep and then Aaron, now you're about five feet behind yep that's fine right so that's 20 feet or around yeah. here somewhere. Um, I gotta figure out if that's, if that's 10, 10, 20. Hold on, I'm gonna get 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. So I gotta get all there, so I'm not gonna be able to make that. Um, so it's gonna have to wait until next turn. Which means that I'm gonna cast. Uh, fucking, I'm gonna cast entangle then. <laughs> Where was that spell? Does that make him fail dex checks? Uh, I'm gonna cast entangle. Uh, it's a twenty foot square, so uh, that's a four, four by four, four by four. So that's only big enough to get these four, I think. You said these are the biggest guys with axes and shit. Yep. Biggest targets, that one. They need to make DC 16. Um, 
Strength savings throw? Ooh, that's not good. Strength? Yeah, fuck it. Thought it was dex. Uh, net one on the back left one, that smaller dwarf looking one, uh, okay. but the rest passed. Fuck. Well, that guy's what restrained. Was it 16? Yeah. Yeah. Damn. But he's a, he's restrained. Uh, okay. Uh, and that means he has a movement of zero, and he, but he can use an action to free himself. Um, other than that. Restrained, you automatically fail dex checks. Uh, I'd, have to, I'd have to look, uh, I can look real quick. All right, you moving or anything? Uh, attack rolls against the creature have advantage, and the creature's attack rolls have disadvantage. Uh, it has disadvantage on strength, uh, dex saves. You're correct. Uh, yeah. Okay, now, then... as you do this, this is a spell, right? Yeah. Okay, so as you do this, you kind of use this one of your hands. You notice that the other hand, you are keeping the reins, but you notice that any attempt to turn now mm -hmm. is going to be probably completely out the window. That's fine. Um... I'm going to uh, I'll pop over I'll pop out of the caravan. Okay. I'm yeah, I'm banning shit. All right. Uh and I'll You can move I'm, everybody else off. They're they're still in, so just move them off until they come up. And I'll duck behind like this wheel if possible. To okay. Take, take some cover. Alright. Uh and that'll be it for that. Alright. As that I'm happens, gonna... you see these four. They turn, seeing you come, and these two, they are going to move up this, like this. This is full tree. See this individual, seeming to be their leader, and turns, seems to utter something. Men! Behind us! We have more! He wields his sword as he turns and points it back. You see now, more individuals turn, you see a certain individual with a, I'd say, a very long staff start emitting something from the end of it. Wait, which one is this? That this one has a staff. range on counter yep. spell? We go... No, I, shit up, dog. I, got, I got enough spells of my own, but... Better. He's restrained? Yeah, yeah, okay. he, yeah. Um... He can spend an action to not be restrained. He can spend yeah. an action to make a save. Yeah, we're gonna do it. Oh, DC 16, 16. Strength. Feeling they're good at them. Nope. Oh, yes! Alright, so. You know what I got just gonna more. stay there. Alright, that's the end of that. Feet. Um, the okay. captain, from what you can see, he's going to move. Actually, he's gonna go here, stand behind his men, and you see him just pull something, uh, looks like a small crossbow, out of his arm. Grab his holster and shoots. Ooh, net 20. And that's going right into your beast. He's going to take 11 points of piercing damage. And that's the oh, end. Fucking, I didn't Fuck this. On to you. Nah, that's fine. It wouldn't have mattered anything. Uh, in future reference, Entangle, when I when I drop it, it turns the entire, entire area into difficult terrain. Totally for, missed Got that you. point. Okay. I don't think it make, makes a difference this time, but... I remember that next time. Yep. I don't think any of them moved enough since nah, the last one. Didn't didn't matter. All right, it oh, was do the you one that was here that moved what more. Doing? <clears throat> I jump out like here. How much movement is that? I don't be halved currently because you're moving from an ongoing caravan. So if you drop out, that's like double your movement. So it's ten feet out, and the rest of your movement's fine. So when you jump out, it's just ten feet. It consumes ten feet, and mm -hmm. I have twenty more feet. Yep. Now, when you drop out, give me an acrobatics check because you're coming from outside of part of the caravan, or almost kind of out of the front. You can see, judging his jump, thirteen. Yeah, you're good. So you just kind of jump out. The snow kind of hits your feet. You go about a foot in, and you land. What are you doing? Five, ten, fifteen. I have reach, so I'm gonna go ahead and just attack this guy here. Okay. Plus nine to hit. Twenty-four oh, yeah, to that hit. That slams. Yeah. <laughs> 14 slashing damage with the halberd. 14. 14 slashing damage. As you with see the that, you pull back and you swing, uh, uh, and he just falls right before so, you. Nice. Yep, okay. and you just drop him. Yep. So another five feet reach for this guy. Got second him. attack. Yep. Nice. That's a 20. Oh yeah, that's gonna three, hit. Three something that to hit. 10. Nice. Oh, yeah. 16. Yep. Slashing Drops damage. Drops him as well. You see as you slice into him, now the Neat. captain in I front know. of him, he looks at you. Men! Be ready! The 
fleet strong. All right, is that the end of your turn? Um, I'm gonna go ahead and bonus action. I'm gonna, I'm gonna cast one of my smites because I don't, I rarely do that. So, are they concentration? They are concentration. You want to save that to next turn? Why? Because if you take damage before your next turn, you, you have to make concentration checks. So you'll uh, lose the spell. Okay, okay. I didn't know that. Yeah. My bad. Yeah, okay. so you want to start you you turn start with the, the smite. Yeah. And then you could have found out the hard way. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't done concentration spells in a long time. Fuck, You're fuck this would have known. Yeah. Yeah. Jake didn't. Fuck this then one. Then I'll just I'll just kind of just be ready. Just bear down. All right. So as you do that, you will see these three. They start moving in. They're gonna all three go up and make attack action. Champion, these challenge. three. It's basically. Uh, two are gonna hit. They're gonna do eight and ten. Okay. All right. Okay, and then so you see these three leave your vision. As you do so, that's about all you see from them. You see the rest of the battlefield start shaping and moving. You see this guy holding his action, pulls back after seeing two fall, rips some what looks like a spear, and wields it and just launches it. And that is going to be right at you. Um, a 16? No, so you just kind of duck and it goes over and just hits right into the rock and splinters. Uh, that's the end of theirs. Gildor, on to you. Okay, I'm just gonna like step out and get next to Bryant. All right, as you do so, give me an acrobatic check. Well, I'm gonna command the gorilla to stop the fucking wagon. Okay, so you do that, and then it just halts, and then you get out. Okay, so you're fine now. Okay, my life. And, and then I'm gonna cast my acid sphere here. All right. So it'll hit all of these. Or is it here? Yeah, 20. It's a 20 foot sphere. I'm trying to map right, it up. 5, 10, 15, 20. So it's going to have to be here. Yeah. 5, 10, 15, 20 to here. Get it. I'll get him there. You can get these far. If you go here, maybe. 5, 10. And then I could get the mage yeah, too. Yeah, 5, 10. So it'd be Dex and. 5, 10. Yeah, yeah. So you could get all four. Yeah, or five. five. Yep. All right. What's the Dex save? Done. 16. Done. 16. Uh, fail, fail, fail. Um, hang on, let me double check. Fail, I'm a wizard too. One more. Three, no, they all fail. Okay, they take 30 acid damage. Um, and at the in, at the beginning of their next turn, was it? Okay, hang on, hang The on. ones that failed take an 11 additional this acid damage. This one dies, this <laughs> one dies. He's fine, he's okay. Oh, hand. I need to check this guy. Barely. You see the caster. As you see, just as he start withering up his he takes, leg. He takes 11 more damage at the start of his turn, by the way. Okay. Because yeah. he can. All um, of them. The, all the failures. Okay. Take 11 more damage. Anything else? Yeah, that's nuts. Petrolic sphere. Good stuff. Um, and then I can move him 30 feet, so... 10... 15, 20, and I'm going to fucking maul that guy. Okay. So this is a lot of attacks. An 18. Uh, That'll hit. That's an 18 plus like 6. Yep, you're good. 17 and 20. Yep. Okay, two more. 13 and 23. Uh, Yeah, 13 hits. All on that guy? Yep. So I had all five attacks hit. Okay. So you just see the beast, boop, 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 and then just literally go like raging freaking beast on him. What's, six, time, what's six times five? 35. 30, 30, 30, or 30. 30. 30. 30. Uh -huh. So it's 30 plus 8. 38. Plus 6. 44. Plus 2. 46. 46. Okay. So you see it as it just. And just start slamming in. The last one's a bite. Okay, and then it rips in. You see part of his like traps start getting like ripped out. But now he takes his axe and he looks as if he goes into some sort of fury. As he does so, he takes his axe and he just rips back into this as a reaction. Um ooh, that's gonna natural 19 and 18. Yeah, it is. Um so these are both gonna hit and it's going to do 
17 points of slashing damage as it just <laughs> you see it just retaliate back uh is that the end of your turn yeah okay um and now you see this one he's going to turn seeing that these look to be decently he handled. Takes 11 damage okay and he's going to go actually you know what remember this is difficult terrain still he was needed. Yeah, but he he was moving this way before he There, he's gonna take eleven. Okay. Um Alright. And then the druid. He takes eleven damage. Um and then you see uh this will kind of be somewhat obvious. Um you see him start blowing things from his hands. As you do this, you start seeing him imbue the person in front of your gigantic monkey beast. You also see him doing it to one of the captains up front with some sort of spell that seems to bind between both of them as it seems to slightly rejuvenate Is this them. like something he's like channeling? He casting. He's, he's casting a spell. He's not channeling, he's casting. How far away is he from me? Um, probably like 90-ish feet. Yeah, he's not. I turns it up. All right, and that is the end of his turn. Um, it is now your turn, Seth. So, life, what do you want to do? So I need to move ten. All right, so. All right, so you want to get out of the car and go where? Did you say twenty feet? Yeah, you want to go twenty feet where? I was wondering the car is the castle within one hundred and twenty feet. Just put him yeah. behind the rock. Yeah, he is. Let's see if he's like, yeah, even if he's right. And I only wish me I asked the pastor. Okay. Yeah. Now, do you have your shield or your mace equipped? No, just a shield. The mace is still in the. Got you. The All right, cool. So you come out, you drop, you have your shield out, and you cast Eldritch Blast. All right. First one is a 24. Oh, yeah, that hits. Damage to that one is uh, six force damage. Okay. You see him kind of cough up a little bit of blood from inside. Ugh, ugh. He seems to get ready to cast something again. My uh, second Elder's Blast is a, oh, no. Nope. seven. Nope, that'll miss. Okay. You got about 10 more feet of movement if you want, but currently you're behind a rock. If I move 10 foot forward, am I within, um, how far is that? 60 feet of any of the opponents? Yeah. Yeah, you can move up right behind Foctus. This is crucial and hit it there. Which is the person that I can see is already damaged. Oh, it's pretty true. someone that much that. Mm. It's already been damaged? Yeah, it. Like, I've already seen the captain. Like, do I know who's there? Yeah, you can see the captain. You can see these guys. You you know that somebody moved behind this tree and is fighting Gildor's pet. The captain. Yeah, you can. Yeah, you can. You want to cast spiritual weapon behind him? All right. Fifteen. Is 15? Is that what he said? 15? 15? Yeah, 15 will hit. Okay. All right. You got anything else? I think that's it moved yes yeah all right cool all righty so another 11 
Yeah, we got the 11. You did only one force 11 to him, right? Yeah. Yeah, we got it. All right, so you see... You see Grendridge and Dennis team. They're both going to move up fighting here. Uh, one moves here. Dennis you guys don't see this, but he's going to take back his staff and do a large sweeping arcing attack. Um, this one, Wade knows... Oh, he whiffs on it. Oh, the second one, he nat 20. All right, I'm going to roll for Grendridge attacks real quick. Uh, natural 6 and a natural 6. Wow. Okay, so whiff, whiff, but Dennis Dean, as he wheels back and boom, you just see this big, like, almost like a snowstorm for a moment, just like as it just slams back and a huge arc blast of snow pierces back and you see these individuals kind of move and back a little bit. <laughs> um, that's the uh, end. Uh, back to Orm. We finally have to figure out this thing. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, and from a 90, 4 by 4, would grab all these bitches. Cool. All right. Remove uh, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. All right. Perfect. And I'm going to cast Entangle again. I'm going to cast it all the way up here, 90 feet away, which is going to do a 4 by 4, which is going to boop, boop, mm -hmm. boop. So it's going to catch all four of them. So I need DC 16 strength saves. Uh, and this one parked. Two are going to make it. And then this guy is no longer going to be restrained. One fails. Yeah, right here fails. Okay. He's three. Damn! Yeah. Oh. We have the fancy rings now. Mm -hmm. I know, I need to get them out here. Use these fucking milk rings. <laughs> Damn, that did not do as much as I wanted it to. But that's my movement, that's my action. Yeah, okay. Hey, I'm gonna I'm gonna bonus action. Uh I'm gonna turn into it's fucking snowy. We'll go with a saber tooth tiger. Dope, dope, dope. Alright, so you turn it. <laughs> You have more movement now, right? Yeah, I do have fucking 10, four, 10 feet more of movement. Okay, cool. I'll go... Go yeah, that. I'll go right... Yeah, that's fine. more. Alright, so you're moving up? Uh, yeah, I'll move farther. All right. He's also a saber tooth tiger now. As you right. do that, you now see Grendridge and Dennis seen. And from what you can clearly <laughs> see now, um, you notice that there's shackles that it looks as if a couple of them have on their backs. And you now hear this, what looks like this caster, he's murmuring something. I, I regret this. Shouldn't have came. The money's not worth it. We're not going to kill them, I don't think. And you see him getting ready, preparing another spell, but you can just tell just by looking at him, he's nervous. Visibly. 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 What you doing? You moving up? You done? Oh, my. my I, oh, I'm, yeah, oh, I'm sorry. Done. Yeah, my bad. Yeah. All right, so after that. What? No. All no, right. I've already used it. We're going here, here. This guy's moving up here. Uh, this guy's gonna turn, run around. There's back a fucking here. guy back there. There's a guy back there. He knows <laughs> Um, and he is going to. Yeah, I think this is the. Wow. Well, all of us yeah. had vision. Like he was, I couldn't see him because he was by the wall. Hey, you wouldn't have seen him anyway. <laughs> so all of us could so, see him. These two, one of the berserkers, the captain, are both gonna move up. Uh, this one's gonna be into your beast. Um. Natural three and a natural seven. What's his AC? What's the seven? What's the plus? Um, it's real low. I don't think. I, I think it's like a twelve. That hits. Really? Yeah, twelve hits. Okay. It has eleven AC. So one hits. All right, and it's going to do. Yep, it's uh, seven points of piercing damage or slashing. Excuse 23 me. Twenty-three HP. All right, now the other. And it has undead fortitude. The other so ones now are going into you. You see the captain. This one's going into you, both of these. The captain moves up, and you see him with this large blade. Long sword. One-handed, though. Oh, my God. A nat one and a two. Wow. So that's going to whiff. Uh, the berserker, though, he gets three attacks on you. Oh, that's a lot better. Nat 20. 
a natural 18 and a natural 6. So two are going to hit. Let's tally that up. So that doubled 24 plus 5, 29 points of slashing damage. You just see this berserker just hangs blood boiling, running up, just slashing into you pretty heavily. Um, that is it. All right, fuck this on to you. How many does my ring of spell story have? Was it four? four. I need one with six. Six lots of spell. Oh, I need this four. I can put an extra counter spell in it. Yeah, I'm just gonna gonna go into the captain. All right. Natural twenty. Oh, oh god. god! Here comes the smoke. No, yeah. Did you, did you didn't bonus did you, action? Did you bonus action? I action know. Yeah, it's fine. I was like weighing the options. Yeah, it would have been wild. That's the problem with the smites. So 11, so 22 points of slashing damage. I'm going to go ahead and smite this one. Okay. Let's use the level 2, because why not? All right. There's uh, another 10, 14. Doubled, so. 24, 28 plus 22. So as you wield it back, <laughs> you bring it down, and with the imbued smite with it, just boom, drop it. And he just falls before he just, oh, 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 and just falls. Before it's like him. right in the shoulder, just like. Now you see the berserker blood, his veins just vasculin, or the vascularity He's raging. in him <laughs> is just ripping. And then you see him turn, seeing his captain fall, and you see him falter for a moment. He's afraid of you. Second attack. He's like, I have more. <laughs> oh, they're crazy. Yeah. Oh, nineteen. Now you see champion. Oh, man. <laughs> Plus six, 13 slashing damage to the berserker. Okay, he becomes very weak. You see him bleeding quite heavily. Fight. <laughs> we'll just do one. Oh, eight plus six. Drops him. 14. Man. See him just fall. Now, as he does so, he gets, hang on, he gets one undying attack on you. Just a crowd of boxes around. Uh, 16? 16? Nope. Oh. So with his last breath, he swings out. And, uh, and you just see blood just squirt out from him as he falls. All right. My guy's going to look at all the dead bodies and just be like. <laughs> blood <laughs> smathering your armor and your blade, dude. Bonus action. Intimidating roar. All right. So that's that. Um, um, I'm going to go ahead okay. and move, I guess. I only got one berserker, so I'm just gonna attack with him into your beast. That's all. I'm... Actually, you know what? No, because you're gonna rock opportunity. Are both of these berserkers? Yeah, but he goes at a different. Oh, okay. I'm the gonna one on the right. I'm gonna go ahead and use my bonus action channel divinity champion challenge. Okay. For these two guys. Okay. So they have to pass a wisdom save of 14. Is oh, my geez. spell casting. Nope, it natural two higher. and a natural three. It. it doesn't matter. What's it's your not, charisma? It's not higher. I wrote a, I wrote a natural two and a natural it is 14. three. Yeah, it's three plus three. All right, so um, they cannot willingly move within thirty feet of me. I'm only going to oh, move well, without. Then, out. Yeah, well then I can't. I can't move towards you anyway. Or like, I was going they to. can't willingly move right. thirty feet away. Oh, they yes. can't move. Oh, they can only move towards. Oh, they well can... then. This guy's going for it. He's turning, seeing his comrades fall. Got him. Yep, give it to him. If, oh wait! One. When he takes one attack, though, he he attacks five times. No, no, it's, it's one. It's a singular you get attack. one singular attack. That five thing. Is five plus attack. six, eleven. That'll miss. So so yeah, the way that works, is you're taking. So he moves. He turns and now. He's going into you. All three. Uh. Fifteen, sixteen, and eighteen. Eighteen will hit. Oh god. I'm rolling like poo. All right, uh, you're gonna take eighteen or twelve. Points of slashing damage, and then you see him, and he just—he <laughs> spits onto your blood. You're kidding, my men. Who are you? We're the Moonlight Marauders. Why have you come? Why have you come? We've been sent and hired to kill those. And you see him—he turns off and just points towards the men in the ruins. You're a monster. That's those the end are, of his those turn. Those are our friends. That's all he says, Gildor. I'm going to move 30 feet this way. The table or your team? <laughs> and then I'm going to um, face step to behind this tree. Nice. 
Then I'm going to cast Toll the Dead on the Mage Man. Okay. That's a 16 wisdom save. Uh, fail. I haven't passed, I don't think, any of my saves today. Takes 11 necrotic damage. Uh, he falls. See him. Yep. Whatever he was casting, immediately <laughs> sides. Anything else? That is all my actions besides the eight fucking that guy. These guys are entangled. I, I still have to go. Uh, the one who's the one with the one. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm just making sure. Yeah, I saw five attacks. Make an attack this time. Got you. I know. I'm just making sure. Damn. 17, 16, it's, 11. Uh, one misses. Okay. Seventeen. So three hits. Okay. Six times three is eighteen. Yep. Eighteen plus. Four, five. He's dead. That thing pummels, dude. You just see just a barrage of punches. Now, he has <laughs> another thing that allows me to make uh Actually, I can just move. I haven't moved. Do that to that other feature. Okay. Anything else? That is it. All right. Um, so, to these guys. So you see these down here. They are all going to try and grapple. And looks like... Uh, what are you guys at? You give me a perception check. You guys are too far and there's a rock in your vision. 16. Um, you think they might be looking as if they're trying to restrain them, but they're not. You see them full intently trying to kill them. And they're going to swing into them. Uh, God, I rolled two twos and an eight. Um, Denison's going to get hit once. He's going to take seven. Okay. That scene looks a little bit rough. Um, okay. Now, they're going to go. Dennis scene's going back in. He's going to try and run to you guys. He sees you guys actually here now. So he's going to go here. I'm sad he didn't get a nice little smack on the restrained guys. Ooh, he ran. Natural 20. Reaction. So this guy, when he goes around, he's going to crit Dennis Dean. The, the not restrained guy? Yeah, the not restrained guy. Um, Damn. Oh, he almost drops him, though. Dennis Dean's got 4 HP. Um, he becomes very weak, but he runs to you. Seeing you fuck this, he drops almost. You see blood just pattered through the snow. Uh, please! Help! Uh, uh, and he almost falls unconscious, but he turns. Hands, and you see him turn and point with his staff back towards Dennis Dean. Dennis Dean, he's not running. He's in here, and he's wielding his sword, and he's slinging it on. Um, yeah, he's, uh, wow, all those whiffed. So he's going to action surge, and he's going again. Oh, my God, you just hear, God damn it, this sword! Yeah, he has some shit sword. Uh, one more hit, oh, my God, and uh, this berserker, who is going to take a reaction back onto him, he's going to do 11 points onto him, the reaction will miss. That's the end of all their turn. All right, life, on to you. Sixty feet. Um, yes. Yeah. You have two actually. Oh, there is a piano. I will count the human word at the level on Grindridge. You mean Dennisine? Grindridge is too far away, but you could hit Dennisine. No, Dennis Steen was the one who moved up. Okay, how much HP? I am doing it now. Alright, so he's back up to 14 HP. Alright, so you can still move. Yeah, there's an enemy right next to fuck this. Within range of my spiritual weapon. Yes. Okay, I'll take a swing with that. Alrighty, so your spiritual weapon just starts swinging around. Twenty range is that hit? Yep. Okay, he is very weak. You see him just taking a beating now. 
Um, this is one of the l two last berserkers left. Uh, anything else, Seth? And now, and now we have angels 30 feet up. Yep. Alrighty. Cool. All right, so you're basically right behind your, or right next to your spiritual weapon, and almost next to uh, one of the berserkers. All right, or I'm on to you. Okay, uh, I'm gonna move forty feet up. I already have a little token. Boop. Um, and then I would like to use my bonus action to drop my wild shape. So I'm not the saber tooth tiger anymore. Okay. Um, and then I'd like to like, uh, like pull out of my back or whatever. Uh, I'd like to like hold up. Frenrich's new sword. Get over here! Uh, and then I'm going to cast Vortex Warp on Rendrich. Oh, he's within geez. 90 feet. Yeah. So, uh, it's assuming he... So, it's a, con it's, it's a constitution save if it's an enemy, but they can choose to save, or fail to save it's a, if it's a friend. So Rendrich can choose to fail to save, and I'm going to teleport him right next to me. All right, so he looks at you. He, he sees this. Is it safe? Yeah. Oh, it's okay. And, yeah. And he just takes it, and then you vortex him. Yeah, he's all, yep. all the way over here. All right, so you take him, and you put him all the way back. Yep. And you see the berserker, and them all just... Yep. Huh. What? And then they turn around, and they look, and... And then I'm going to hand Grandrich his new sword. You see the three next to the one that is restrained. They turn at each other, and you hear them muttering something to themselves. He's a scatter. <laughs> Scatter! Alright, is that the end of your turn? That's my action bonus action. All right. Does Grandrich take his new sword? Oh, yeah. yeah. He looks at you. Oh, yeah. As he lands, he Does almost I... looks at you and then is like, oh, where am I for a moment? And then he's like, sword. And you see him take his. Yeah. Fuck you. Hit, yeah, <laughs> hit, the, hit the same same guy a bunch of times and it does more damage. Mm. Okay. Does that require attunement? No, not the one you got. Yeah. Um, or it might actually. I'll have to look. I didn't know. Uh, it might. He looks at it. I'll take it. Now, your turn. Fuck this. We go into this berserker. All right. Hopefully, finish him off. Plus nine, nineteen to hit. Yep. Plus nine. Yeah, that that nine is Four. gnarly. Ten, ten slashing damage. Yep, that'll do it. As he drops to one. He's going to rear back, and he's going to slam into you. Okay. Natural 20. Oh, all right. Oh, damn. Hey, dude, I barely hit it, like, it's, at it's, all. It's only been crazy. Yeah, it literally has. It has. Yeah. Most of them into my monster. 22. Okay. 22. You'll be okay. But then he falls. You see him with his last. He almost smiles for a moment, and then... Uh, it hits him. He's dying. He's dead. <laughs> all right. Anything else? I got friends, right? Yeah. I'm going to go 30 feet and use my second attack on this guy. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I only need to go 25 feet. Yeah, there you go. So, he's blood hungry. I, mean, I guess. Like, right here. Yeah, we go. Dude, he's <laughs> killed more than me and I have AOE. <laughs> when, when, when Jake picks up Ooh, a 18 plus yeah, 9. Yeah, that'll hit. Right. What's Pulmon Master doing again? When he can use uh, his, one. Uh, 7 so slashing damage. Down. He can use his reaction to make an uh, I'll go ahead and smite more reactions. Also, then make a bonus action. 15 oh, more yeah. slashing yep. damage. And you just There's smite damage. <laughs> yes. The body just <laughs> fall down and slam to the ground. <laughs> start melting into the snow. Oh, oh, blood just cascading into the My snow. My dude is just high on rage. Right now. <laughs> 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 right. Just paladin. You know what's funny? He had like the perfect opportunity to him with all the breathe fire. And he like didn't. <laughs> No, they yeah. 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 Instead, he was just like right, slap, slap, slap. You good? He's pounding. Yeah, I'm good. I'll wait to see what these guys will do. This guy runs. Okay. <laughs> Not my fucking problem. Starts bailing. Uh, that's the only one that can run on that turn. Uh, Gildor, your turn. Who is still alive? The these guys. Can't <laughs> see. No, he killed. The guy, you guys can see there's only yeah, these the, four. The, now there's a guy behind us. Oh, yeah, room. yeah. He's running from the runes. We'll probably have three. Restrained guys, are they easy to hit? Restrained guys? Yeah, it's advantage against them, if I recall correctly. Uh, let me look. Yeah, hold on, I got it right here. 
Attack rolls against the creature have advantage. Yep. Gotcha. I'm going to face step again. Here. So I could... I didn't have line of sight because I fucking rock. And I'll just cast Chill Touch on the Restrain guy. Okay. I rolled a 1 for my... Mm. 19 plus a bunch. Yep. <laughs> the fuck's my D8? 10 necrotic damage. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, now, now here's where I get to do this. 5, 10, 15, 20, 30, and then I can bonus action move because of aggressive... So he's oh, he's yeah. he's up here. <laughs> he's nice. he's on them. Nice. Barreling down, eh? Yeah, he just fucking went. So I'll hit the one on the left first. I'd say two hits. Yeah. Um. I mean, as long as you're rolling above a twelve on yeah, the base. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The last one, the last one was not above a twelve. Two more above the twelves. So yep. Four hits. So here come four times six. Rocky Balboa style. Shoot, might as well just call him. I don't even know. Twenty-four plus eight. Thirty-two. Uh, Twenty-one. Plus five. Thirty-seven. On the thing, left one. Thing is done. A total of eighty-five damage this fight. The Thunder Beast would have been worse. I'm gonna say you, you're almost matching the battle. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. So with that, you see. These two, what, this one? The left one is the one I have. This one? Yeah. Oh. And as he does so, you hear, We just wanted the gold! And you see a little bit of his gold pouch just fall to the side. And you I see a few out. gold fall out. Somewhat covered in his blood, but nonetheless, gold. Now, the last man standing, he drops his weapons, and he goes down to his knees. Please. He looks right at you. Spam me. Well, the only person close is the zombie gorilla. That would probably not. Because it's not very smart. It's also out of attacks. Next turn. Yep. So, uh, with that, life. There's only one person so, left. Just a guy there? Yep, there's just one I'm guy gonna, there. I'm not over it. Say that again? I'm just the bodies. Mm. Okay, so you want to search the bodies. All right, so does anybody want to do anything else before we technically end the combat? Because he has technically given up at this point. I'm going to make Abe capture him. So he has two of his arms. He just pulled them. All right, so you just control him to grab him. So There's two top arms, like up here. He's like still gorilling with the other two arms. Mm -hmm. All right, so at this point, we'll say combat and initiative is over. You now have this individual under your control. What are you guys doing? I want to use my investigate check to search all the bodies. All right, so you and life start searching around. Um, give me investigation checks, both of you. Or you guys can aid one if you wish to. You should aid me if we're doing investigation, 100%. You, should, you aiding me? I hope you're aiding me. I that... Okay, no. So, you look around, what'd you roll? I rolled garbage, so I need to aid me. <laughs> well, you didn't. I mean, I have aspects, and which one of us have a better roll? What are the roles, Nope. Why don't you just make two separate investigation checks? Well, here's a fucking second investigation check. So garbage. What the dice guys give you? No. So wait, we're taking time. I'm gonna take ten. All right, sure. So you take ten. You guys look around. Go eighteen. Uh, um, you... I got a thing that I'm gonna do. By the way. Okay. Um, I'm gonna fucking have Dennisine. I saw you take some hits. And I don't... how's Grandridge doing? Grandridge, you okay? Um, Good. You I'm all right. Okay. Nothing too too bad. All right, fuck it. I'm going to throw down Aura of Vitality. It's a third-level spell, which does a fucking ton of healing. If I recast two my sticks. Summon Gorillan spell... Yeah, I have... I have two HP. Can I, that heal him? need to roll 20 D6. Because if I, I dismiss him and summon him again... Six D8, that was shit. Um, Is he like half health? <laughs> Connor. I had two HP. 
Yeah. That's why I was like, I got friends. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that's uh, that's pretty <laughs> nuts. Going going what's, deep. What's there. your max HP? Seventy. Okay. Uh, I'll give you. I'll take it all. I'm just kidding. No. I have <laughs> I have my own stuff. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna give uh, I'll, I'll give thirty HP to Denisine. Okay. Uh, and then I'm gonna give you. Denisine's almost topped off with that. Nice. Uh, and then I'll give you the the last thirty. You get thirty okay. HP. Nobody else needs it. I didn't get hit. Uh, I mean, all right. So uh, with your guys' level. investigations, like, while you guys are looking and taking your time, of 40. notable worthy that you guys see as you're looking around, you notice that the captain had something that was kind of attached to him. Um, life, you notice this as you go over. Uh, you go and you realize that he had what looked to be a plus one maul. Um, it is just kind of noticed just by just looking at it um it's engraved um you've seen these before uh you guys were just in town you saw some of them um this is very obvious probably purchased actually in alberzine um that's the most notable thing that you probably find just looking around um as you uh look gildor you go over and you find a spell scroll that you see on one of the mages you go. You want to collect it? I assume. So write that down. You find a spell scroll. What's the spell scroll of? Um, you're not quite sure. You're gonna have to. You blocked his camera. You're gonna have to probably um, investigate it. But just by looking at it, um, you can kind of make out that it has something to do with um. I cast identify. Okay. You realize that this is a spell known as alarm. Your book. Good spell. Do I have any gold? Uh, yes. You find total as you guys are both looking around. You guys find a total of ninety gold, and you notice that inside almost all of these pouches are labeled with this ember like icon that you notice is like almost red it's like a flamed almost uh dyed into the bag as you look at it you notice that some are filled more than others uh the captains as you go back and you look you find another hundred on the captain so in total you guys find 210 gold you go back and the only other thing of uh i'd say Note is um, you find some sort of horn. Hey, corn? Horn. <laughs> I was like, I was like, the fuck did he just find? Yeah, you, you find some medieval porn. Oh god. Yeah, one of them just has a smut book. Yeah. Like, oh, I thought you said corn. No. <laughs> I was confused. Now, as you guys are sitting there, the beast is gripping this man. What are you guys doing? Is anybody approaching him? You see, Denison and Grendridge, they kind of come over. Thank you for the aid. Gredridge turns. They were trying to kill me. The one man told me that I I knew too much. So Dennis did the same thing, that uh, we'd messed around in Abazine one too many times. Don't wish I had speak with the dead so we could interrogate the... Oh wait, we got a live guy. You have a live guy. He's got a live guy. Yeah. Speaking of him, what are you guys doing with him? I'm going to tell Abe to put him down. Next you to drop him? And I'm going to tell Abe to gather all the bodies in a big pile. All right, so you gather up all the bodies. That'll take about probably 10, 15 minutes while you guys are maybe talking to him. He'll yeah. be doing that in the background. All right, so who's speaking with him? I'm going to go post up on top of that rock. All right, so you post up next to the rock. Keep it walking, keep it walking. You see the man on his knees. You see Grendridge and... Dennis seen they kind of make their way. Grendridge kind of walks up. Why were you after me? You said that you wanted me dead. Why? And you see he holds his long sword kind of near his neck. We were hired in town. There was a man. We didn't see his face. He just gave us gold. He told us to trail you when you left. Well, just the two of you. I don't know who they are. We were told to kill you once you made it a couple miles outside of town and make it look like an accident. 
That is all. You told us that you had information that couldn't be spread. Render just kind of looks around. <laughs> I'm not really that smart. What kind of information could I know of? Something of some construction? And he turns and he looks and he's like, oh my god. What would that have to do with what would that have to do with anything? Why is that important? And then he turns he turns and now he looks at you, Grendridge. <clears throat> so about four or five years ago, there was a small construction under the militia headquarters. Council said it was important for some sort of safekeeping. Sent a team down there. We weren't allowed to go down and look, but he just made sure that they had their space. It took him about about a month and then a year with follow-up construction. And, uh, yeah, we never went down there, though. They said they were just patching in some sort of landfills, and why would that be important? Why would I need to die knowing this? He turns back to the individual on his knees. What more about... This construction. I don't know much. Just know that I was paid to take your head. To keep quiet and leave town as far as I could. Even leave the region. Didn't want anybody's hands on this. Now, you guys are hearing this. What are you guys doing? Well, I'm going to ask him. Who, who are you? My name is Talor. I'm just... A normal man looking for work. What is this red ember symbol? It was just given to me from the man. Underneath part of his cloak, he had some sort of a red gown, but I couldn't get a very good look. At Told this point us. in the conversation, you see, you just ask Gildor like. Go to the body pile. Okay. And you start hearing cackling as I like acid spray all the flesh off their bones. <laughs> so meanwhile, just in the back. <laughs> yes. With even like splashing noises. <laughs> kind of smells bad, but I don't have a sense of smell. It's just, you, just, you just hear the, the sizzling in the background while this is happening, and the man just kind of looks over and he's like, My God, those. May my brother's souls, may they rest. So. So what is this? Who is this group of people that you're with? Are you well, just, are you just some mercenaries. Many of us look for help and jobs on the work board. That's where many of us were wrangled up. There was some meeting in an alleyway, and we were Thomas Gold. That was it. When we met there, most of the women and children were told to leave. And then the next question was if we were unable to kill a man, to leave. So this job, this hit, was put on a put on the board in a discreet way. As I was say, probably not straight up, but it was, <coughs> it was put on the board. For promised, the promised for the twenty meeting. gold each. So me and eight of my brothers, we took it up. And then a couple others heard about it, wanted some of our gold after we were paid, so they tagged along, seeing us with. Thick gold purses, they know we don't have jobs. A few more joined us. Before too long, and then he just points over to the pile of bodies. Well, that was our group. Clarification. You said that the any women and children who showed up were told to, to leave. Yeah. And anyone capable of killing a man was told to leave? No, to stay. If you're not, oh, if you're, stay. Yeah, okay. if you're not, if you're not capable, you were told to leave. All right, I misunderstood. All right, that's never mind. That seemed like a really. Cool, I'm not there. What are you gonna do with me? You're just a dude. You're no one. Can I just take? The word of the Moonlight Marauders, please. Can I just take my gold and leave then? I'll say I nothing. I feel like he's poor. Doesn't have a job. I don't I have nothing. Hey, don't we have a whole estate that these people employed? Are we just gonna keep picking up people? <laughs> We're, gonna keep, We're gonna pick up literally everyone we come across. <laughs> uh, I, I think we just cut twice. What was that, Seth? 
Say it one more time. Say it again. He said, thank God we were the same as Kim. You know, the place is what we were going to say. <laughs> still nothing. No, he's still nothing. I don't know if it's the mic or, the, or these speakers, but they're it's, not. It's, it's, it's gotta be his it, mic. You come through it, sometimes it, good, and then other times it's not. It's like Kenny for supper. It's definitely it's like, a yeah, yeah. It's just muffled. I heard I said. Rah, 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 rah. <laughs> yeah, you, you yeah. might be getting too close to. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. So, man, we need to figure something out that way. All right, we're troubleshooting. Yeah, we'll figure it out at the break or something. Yeah. So. You you said something to Gredridge. What we'll, we'll... about Gredridge? You have Discord open? Can you type it? Oh, oh yeah, type Discord. type it in type it in Discord and I'll and I'll pick it up. Yeah, because I'm opening so up my computer. At least know what we're talking about. All right, so the rest of you, while Seth is over there murmuring like, what's his name in Black Clover? Um, I have a mechanical question. How many piles of bones did I get from all these bodies? Nine. Nine additional piles of bones. I was thinking when he did not. I said, I don't yeah, know. Piles of bones. Bones. Yeah. All right, so. What are you guys doing with him? Fucking. You're, you're, oh no, your monkey's not even holding. We, we just got this guy loose, right? You guys seen Grendridge? You gonna cut this guy loose? Oh, he so did try to kill him. Grendridge just sits there. Unless he has any more information on see why not. Supposedly, I'm to die. He looks at Denistine. Why are you to die, though? Denistine just kind of looks. He looks around. Yeah, did he say anything about that guy? And the guy oh, just looks. Guy. He's a part of some sort of organization. Don't know what. But you're working. And you've been lying to the capital for years. Supposedly. But I don't know any more information than that. Dennis mm-hmm. just looks around. Somebody knows that I'm working with the Shadow Council. Okay. He turns and he looks at the man. Did he tell you a name? <coughs> Did he tell you anything of an importance of this council I was working for? Did he give you a name? No, he, he didn't. He just said, you've been lying. He turns back and Dennis walks away. Not too worried, though... I cannot go anywhere that the Red Council knows. You... You weren't supposed to report back or anything? You were just supposed to ditch town? I mean, we were supposed to uh, send word to our captain. Job was done, and he was supposed to bring in proof of the hit. Wait, are you saying you have a captain that's not here? No, he's dead in the... Pile. Then why would you send word to the, to the captain? Well, we didn't think he'd die. Oh, so the captain is the one with the contact, but he's dead. Gotcha. That makes sense. Screaming from over there. I was thinking of a way that this guy could report that the job was. Where are you guys heading, if you don't mind me asking? Fuck. No. All right. Mind your damn business. You don't want this smoke. We want to give him like. Can I leave then? It's twenty gold he got originally, and just. I, yeah. He pulls out. It's actually ten. Some of the other men stole some of my gold. Well, that's our sound. Uh, yeah. Leave, you take the men's ten gold. I think ten gold. No, no, no. We can't. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, the whole room walks over. Yeah. <laughs> I think 10 gold in your life is... Well, yeah. It'll at least get me somewhere maybe safe. Yeah, I think... I'd... Grendridge, you don't have anything you'd be willing to give up as proof that you're dead, right? Like, you have a shitty sword, but that doesn't... It turns around and it's about 50 feet back in the snow. Yeah, yeah that's about it, but... No, you don't I don't know if that's they, really proof. They took all your shit. Like, they took everything. The only yeah. thing you can give them is your head, and that's not what we want to do. <laughs> so, yeah, dude, fuck off. Yeah. So the guy just gets up, all right, and he grabs what little bit he has, and you just see him take off. You guys now see 
He just pitter patters off through the snow. It's about six, seven ish p.m. You can start to see the sun slowly starting to set, starting to pick up a little bit of snow. You guys are about three, four miles outside of Alberzine. What do you guys want to do? Oh, yes. 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 Uh, it's 22 gold and 5 silver. That'll be 90. Okay. 22 gold and 5 silver. Everyone gets 22 gold and 5 silver? Yep. Cool. I, I, it's okay, a uh, platinum is 10 gold. You have 70 gold. 20, 22 gold plus what I have. Right. Five gold. All right, so what are you guys doing? To Adventus, the home. Uh, fucking... Wherever our home is. Gonna, is it Adventus? Uh, Am I misremembering? I'm gonna. It is. I'm gonna take. You know, after this guy fucks off, I'm, I'd like to take like ten minutes. Okay. And I'd like to look around the, the ruins specifically, if I can figure out what the deal with these ruins are. Okay. Uh, give me an investigation check. Ruins. While well, he's doing that, I'm getting Abe back hooked up on the cart, and Damn, I'm reading. Come my, here, Abe. And I'm reading my book. <laughs> And you start reading your book. Nine. Nine? Um, not much. Though as you kind of walk around, you see at one point this looked to be some sort of structure. Yeah. Long lost. Yeah. Um, seems way older. Give me an intelligence check. Fifteen? Um, these runes have weathered long, possibly past time that Hexwell has been known. Hexwell has been known to be around 100, maybe 150, so this 200 years. This is possibly years. before it. Rose. Yeah, rose or something. You notice that it, it, for how worn and weathered, plus the color and the texture and just what the building has been made out of, mm -hmm. really dated. Really dated. Mm -hmm. And even you waking up in a pretty secluded area, you've never really seen anything like this in Hexwell. You've maybe seen them on passings, but never really looked into them. And now that you're really investigating it, mm -hmm. it's dated. Okay. All right. Then I'll head back in the game. I have right. phones to make an infinite cast to animate dead scroll. I just need 125 gold. Then our house can always have skeletons. Yeah, they just. The, the, the butler just goes, all right, don't kill us today, skeletons. <laughs> just every day, don't kill us. All right, so you guys are all going back to the carriage. Gathering your things, gathering up all your stuff. My heading... character is going to say, I still have the seven platinum. That I... Our seven platinum now. Well, I was going to say, I want to put it toward house. Some... I wasn't able to do the right thing. I still want to do the right thing. All right, so you guys gather yourself so up. If you want the seventy gold for your, that'll help. All right, so you guys are go through. Are you guys traveling anywhere off of the beaten path on your journey back? Because it's about a three days travel. Because if not, I'll need an animal handling check. That's uh, the only reason why I'm asking. If not, we'll need an animal. Yeah, because you, well, you can stay on the. Trails, you know, yes. the, the, and that won't require right, right, oh, right. But okay. if you guys want to, you know, try and uh, go anywhere well, off. I mean, I can drive first to get the worst out. So I was, I also have a, I have a spell prepared, a cold pass without a trace, where theoretically we wouldn't leave a trail. Like the, so, yes, nobody would be able to tell that a wagon yes. going down this road. Uh, and I can do that. Would be good for like initially for the maybe. next two hours. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Get you uh, out of town, maybe. Yeah. I guess you know. Get, Twenty miles up the road. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it makes this impossible to track unless they have like divination magic. Yep. Pretty much. Pretty much. It's so amazing. yeah, so let's head to the road, and then we'll all do that in the next two hours. That'll put us in a pretty hefty barrier. But we need to. Oh, actually, I could do it. Yeah. Or if you, I would then have zero spells. <laughs> That'd be a whole lot of fucking spell slots. So as long as we don't get into another fight. Uh, yeah, so we're, we're heading back to the road. We're taking the road. Uh, I'm going to cast Pass Without a Trace for the first hour. Are you going to cast Pass Without a Trace before we leave this map so they don't see a wagon left this battle? Sure. The road isn't the very far away, so yeah, that's fine. We'll all hop in, cast a spell. 
wagon doesn't leave any tracks. Right, right. Head of the road. Got you. Take off. Take Travel off. how long? Two hours? Uh, I'm going to do an hour. Okay. If nothing's happened, cool. I'll, I'll re-up one pass without a trace. Got gotcha. you. Spending both second level spell slots. And as long as nothing happens, then we'll figure it out. Okay, so. I was going to say, I'll take the second drive shift. Okay. Remember, driving is easier because you only need animal handling for the one horse. Abe listens to commands. Yeah, unless something probably happens, Abe's traveled. Yeah. So, you know where you're going, so command him to go. You shouldn't really need to control him necessarily, yeah. especially if you're on a path Yeah, you just the command, follow the road. I'm definitely going to still be on Right. Make some shit happen. All right, 100%. so, as you guys are heading back to your caravan, give me a perception check. You've already casted, you're getting ready to head out, you get yourselves back onto the main road. 22. 22. 10. 10. 17. 8. Okay, 17. 17. Okay, so, Gildor, as you guys are setting off, and you guys are kind of setting, nestling up, you crack open your Betrayer of Flesh, and as you do so, you kind of lean back into the caravan, and as it takes off for a moment, you very faintly, into somewhat of the darkness, but very faintly far into the snow, see... It looks to be outdoor Trixus. He seems to just be standing, watching. You watch the caravan kind of just go off into the district or distance, and then the snow just kind of fades. He doesn't chase after or move. He just seems to kind of stand there and watch. He fades from view, and you guys go on for an hour. Nothing happens. You guys go on for another four or five hours. Run into very few travelers. Many are enclosed within their caravans with the darkness and the snow. Now you guys are traveling amongst the darkness of night. Mm -hmm. um, you guys pass through a very small couple of towns and villages that are lit. Um, the snow starts picking up quite a bit, though. Uh, at this time of the year, you guys are like in the later portion, what would be like almost November, December in our time. Mm -hmm. So snow is almost at its peak here in Hexwell. As you guys... Get through um, the first eight hours, nothing. You swap off, fuck this, and you guys start going for the next eight hours. Um, yeah, you guys are getting long rest for Do this. I get to roll for my book? I was about to say. Now, while this is happening, during your first long read, you can give me, I need a uh, intelligence check and then an arcana check. 24 and 28. <sighs> oh, wow, okay. Now, you are reading out of what? Uh, betrayer flesh okay so are you staying yeah, in um the same area with your monstrosities or do you want to try different content i want to finish the breakthrough i was close to okay you realize as you read on about your summoning of these monstrosities um you you understand about this possible essence of necrotic and this Old temperament that it speaks of within this book. You read in and you see that whoever wrote or possibly created or helped write this book had understandings in Hexwell. You hear speakings of coldness and of cold magic, of things that have been imbued to almost enrich things that you touch with these. And as you go on, you get close to the end of what is it a very extensive chapter and you realize at the end of it that you are going to with possible I'd say good copying possibly be able to create your own version and imitate what would be a spell known as uh, snare but this is a normal snare but instead it will imbue imbue the field and anybody that fails their checks inside of this will take 1d6 damage and this web you can possibly imbue behind your creature as it runs leaving this almost like trail of webbing that allows it to like leave behind becoming rough terrain well, it's, I know what fucking animal uh, that my third uh, I was gonna get a smart on dead. Fuck smart, I'm gonna get a spider. You, you know this to be known as a very battle controlling heavy spell as you read on. That there were tons of um known to be 
not necessarily necromantic users, but wizards that use this along with like wall force to imbue creatures almost on the same level to help control the battlefield. Now, what happens if they fail to save? Uh, the Does damage, it snare them? Yeah, well, you get the normal web. So you get the web spell. Oh, it's web. But you web is good. have oh, this good. on top, or excuse me, it's snare, but you have um, on top of that, which if you don't know what snare is, I'll read it to you or real quick. Um, snare is... Bah, bah, bah. While you cast a spell, um, you use a cord or some sort of rope in a tip. Or no, wait, it was web. Okay, no, it is web. You're right. Okay, first. It's web. Web. Yeah, yeah snare is good. Snare, I thought was an out of combat. So you thing. basically just anchor thick webs yeah. to walls or flat surfaces or whatnot, and anything that goes through it can do. Um, I think it's. It's a deck saving throw and a failed save. The creature is restrained as long as it remains or until the webs break free. A uh, creature restrained by the webs can use its action, blah, blah, blah. Um, the, way, the webs are normally flammable, which means that any five foot cubic deals 2d4 damage to any creature that does this. Now this is Hulk. So this that leaves behind it is 2d4 <laughs> plus a d6. Mm. So you can imbue this onto one of your creatures, except essentially enchant this. Now you can't enchant it on multiple, it's like one a day, but you can cast this on one of your creatures and... Wait, it's one a day, this. so does it not cast a spell slot? One a day. No, it is. It's, it's a spell slot. And it is it, it's the spell web. Or you, you can, can just... The spell web. Yeah, or that you can just use the web. An undead. Right, if you cast it on one of your creatures, it works that way. Yeah, or you can just cast web. What level of spell is it? Second. second. Yeah, you're good. It's a, it, it's a very good spell. Yeah. yeah. Good stuff. I need a fast summon. So, as you read through that, is there anything else? Uh, no, yeah, I mean... Life, do you want to do anything on your ride back? Got to open your check. Shadow figure check. Okay, give me a perception check. Actually, give me two. For the two days that you guys will be traveling, and on the third day, you guys won't need it. Could you just send me what your it does on Discord? Six so I can copy it down 11. in a note. What was it? Six and eleven. Uh, from what you can tell, no shadowy figure. I would like to uh, every so uh, yeah. now. To, wait to use this, you are going to need to copy this into your spellbook. Yeah. Is it a necromancy spell? Like, is it a school? Uh, yeah. it's Conjuration. Well, no, this, um, no, this version from the Betrayer of Flesh, is it a necromancy spell? No, not specifically. So if you have your book, you, it's a, it's only a 12 Arcana check to copy it successfully and have it forever. So if, plus you have the alarm spell scroll. Right, so if, yeah, so if you have your spell, you can literally do them both right now and just copy them over. One passes. Okay, so 12 is the one and alarm is an 11. To just be able to copy it over then they successfully. Both pass. You got to do the other one there for both. You copy I, I one. did two different. Okay, yeah, then you're good. Yeah, then you're they good. They both passed 12. Yeah. Uh, one one did pass 12. The other passed. It was 12. Was yeah. he beat? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, they yeah, both passed anyway. Yeah, you're good. Uh... All right, so you guys are traveling back. You guys are yep. about a I'm day gonna, with him. I'm gonna Anything else on the last day? On one of the, uh, the second day, actually. Okay. So, uh, I'm gonna cast Enhance Ability. Okay. Uh, and I'm gonna take a look out for Trixis. Okay. Yes. Uh, and well, it's gonna be the Perception. It's gonna be yep. Wisdom based wisdom. Abilities. Yep. Yes. So I, that's a Perception check at advantage. God. That's better. Uh, 14 plus 8, 22. Yeah, you look around. You don't see anything. You don't see anybody following you. You guys even take, you know, bathroom breaks, stop, maybe get some food, whatnot, but nothing seems to be out of the ordinary. Um, the only thing that's really out of the ordinary is there's not a lot of people on the road right now. The storm over the last few days seems to have kind of, like, impeded people, um, but that's about it. It seems as if, like, the snow's just picked up a little bit more than you're used to. You're not quite sure. Like, you hear words very faintly of people that are traversing of, like, you know, and the storms are picking up. 
not quite sure if they're talking of just the snow or maybe the storm sites, but that just seems to be the common theme on the roads. Okay, so after I do that, can mm-hmm. I do a quick, like, leaf through of the other two new books I got? The sequ- yeah, you can. Um, the Book of Secrets and the One of Hate, um, you realize on the One of Secrets, uh, just quickly, um, Book of Secrets spells. Uh, Something that some wizard or some sort of early arcanist wanted to write some spells in for, from what you can tell, just a quick flipping buddy to pass knowledge on to. What about the hate? Uh, the Book of Hate. Uh, this one is a little bit more, I wouldn't say like dark magic. Um, this one is a little bit more in tune with those that are looking to uh, more or less like do damage in combat. Um, looks as if like this was some sort of almost like a entry level novel to beginning um, with like combating with spells, trying to learn how to take vengeance on those who you dislike. Well, I want to check read more of that because I have I actually have like besides my beastie, I have very all right cast and punch. All right, give me an arcana check. Actually, give me an uh, intelligence check. Eight, Just reroll. It's five instead. Five total? No, it's plus five. It's 13. 19. 19? What'd you roll? 19. Cool. 14. Okay, so... Four plus five. It takes you about uh, four or five hours. Um, You come across... One spell that you can kind of decipher after reading through. Um, it looks as if it's mentioned as some sort of magical darkness that you're able to some sort of control. You're telling me it's darkness. Possibly by the way you go through and you read, it looks as if that could possibly be it. Yeah. You, you gave me a book on alchemy, right? I think you got the book on alchemy. I don't think I gave it to you. I know I have a book on alchemy. So I'm, uh, I'm going to cast uh, enhanced ability on intelligence checks. I'm going to read about alchemy for, for a little bit. Wait, can I get enhanced ability? No, you're a wizard. Can you cast it on me? Yes. You cast you, it on me. You need to start asking. Yeah. <laughs> start asking, but I should have asked hey, that first. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I thought about it, but you just started doing it. I'm like, mm, hold on. You just used it too. Yeah. So yeah, I did. if you want to, this would be something else you'd have to, I'd say you probably, with all the time you spent, this would probably be like, get back home to do this, but you could probably, you know, write this one back down once you learn it. Cause you know, like probably you'd learn, write it down and copy one spell a day during your travels. Yeah, if it's dark, it's dark, it's dark, it's dark, it's dark. Second. I have darkness. Do you really? I didn't know that. I was thinking about using it today, but like, it's only 60 feet. I was gonna try to like cast it over here. Yeah. So, as you guys make your way back, nothing other than more. He wants to read about the book of the gods. The book, yeah, the, the, yeah, yeah. I did give him that book. Yeah. Okay, give me an intelligence check. Are you gonna anything for my alchemy? Uh, what was your? I never roll. We can come back. No, you can give me an intelligence. What was it, Seth? So enough to cast enhance ability on this side. Hey! <laughs> Everybody <laughs> wants to. Okay. <laughs> We're a bunch of fucking book nerds. <laughs> Great. All right, sixteen total. All right, yeah. six. So intelligence quit. Yep. Yeah, the whole way you guys are just like three days straight vegging out in the back like, of your caravan just. <laughs> It's dormant outside. I don't only read for a, a twenty. What? Thirteen. Oh, thirteen. Um, you don't really find too much. You kind of read through. Uh, you get vague, you know, words of a bunch of different gods. Um, <laughs> nothing that really assimilates with anything you're really looking for. You see that there are gods that are named to be undead, and some that aren't. Um, but nothing that really goes further into anything that could possibly be of interest. There's a whole thing over there. 
not connected. I didn't know that. <laughs> Just for that. And I actually can't. My cord's too short to reach mm. all the way back mm. there and anyway. put my vape on the table. So. Oh. Just literally, everybody knows. Just so you heard that, that was Wade. Wade. Wait, 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 wait. All right. So anyway, so your your alchemy check. Yeah, yeah. I'm reading my book. Um. And sixteen total. You go through and you start understanding a lot about basics in some of these potions. Um, the possibilities of uh, poisons, especially. You notice that there's a lot of plants that are in Hexwell that could be made into some potent potent poisons, but sure they would need to be... Hmm? Like, those are two different professions. There's a, po there's a poison? Oh, yeah. I don't fucking know. And there's alcohol. Right. I don't but this book that he got is literally got poison in it. It's got healing. It's got all kinds of stuff. So then seven, it's like a herbologist book. I mean, but it's the creation of alchemical components. So if you brought it up, so I'm, I'm telling you, yeah, I'm telling you. I'm happy with poison. Double, double the price. You know, when you, well, when you take a plant and you create it into a potion. It's like a tech book talk. It'll fuck you up, <laughs> but it also makes your face look nice. But basically, you get the gist of basically the the poisons that you can create. There's ways to mask them that mm -hmm. are mentioned here that aren't very common. Most okay. poisons are very you know visibly, or if they're added to, they have a taste or very strong to them. But there's you know it says that you know there's flowers possibly here in Hexwell, or even this speaks of Audre, which is known to have like wild flowers that grow crazily that if gathered. Could be turned into some very strong undetective. Hey, while we're traveling, yeah, I'm gonna draw a map. Oh yeah, oh, you're a map boy. You're you're a, you're a fucking. I wanted to find something, <laughs> Mr. Cartographer. <laughs> All right, so I'm drawing a map from everywhere, Alberzine to back to where you guys go. Everything you mention. Yeah. Okay, well you're good yeah. at that. You're really good at that, so I'm not even gonna make you roll. You're really good at that. All right, so you guys, you guys make it back. You guys are about a couple hundred well, feet. I mean, it does say in the rule book that no ability check is required. Right? Is it really? Yes. Yeah. Awesome. Cooler than we all thought. Oh yeah, I used my trance feature. I'm now proficient in blacksmith. We'll say. <laughs> okay. Nice. <laughs> He can do all kinds of things if everybody didn't know. So, yeah. anything yeah. else? Oh, you good? Beach. Uh. Sounds like we're good. Yeah, I would. I would have. I would have dropped some more fast without trace as we went. So double up, make sure we're good. All right. Followed, but. Yeah. I'll say that um, on your guys' basic way back, nothing eventful. You guys make it back to Inventus to your homestead. As you guys walk up, you notice immediately in your, you know, almost week in being gone that your home has dramatically been cleaned up. That your gold has already been put to some pretty well spent. You notice that the entirety of it has been enclosed. Everything has been put back to the way it was. And it wasn't even in some cases put back with wood like you may have thought they found some materials and some stone and were able to even match up some of it to make it look quite decent for what you guys left. Um, you notice that there's even what looks like from all the traversing back and forth, the roadway that you guys have is actually starting to turn into more of like a driveway. Um, so you, people are starting to actually see that you guys are living here. Um, you guys pull up and you notice that some people have even stopped now that you've made your way up and they've almost like stopped on the side and they have like their carriage set up and you see two individuals on the outside just kind of looking off at your estate as you guys are pulling up. And as you guys are doing so, you see a man. What do you, you guys live there? Who's asking? Oh, I was just, I'm from the area and no one's lived there in quite some time and I just appreciate you guys picking up the place. If so, I just wanted to give my thanks. My wife, she bakes, and I was just hoping to bring by some food or, well, you know, gift for whoever lives there. That was all. Not trying to intrude. 
completely ignore the fact that a carriage that we're in is being pulled by a large <laughs> what the heck was? zombie weird, girl. Weird shit can <laughs> she can she bake for fifteen? <laughs> yeah, we we have a we have a lot of children. Uh, oh, an orphanage. <laughs> Halfway there, kind of. I mean, we've adopted. We could maybe put together sweets or something for them, but I don't know if we could cook a whole dinner for 15 plus yourselves, but... But I don't eat food. Yeah, it's also true. I don't as well. Hmm. Oh yeah, I have gloves. You can't tell anymore. I mean, yeah. that's... I mean, other than I'm not the asking. clothes hanging off your, like, rim-boned body. I'm in a I'm not fucking... Asking. You I just, could just be scrawny. I'm, I'm just scrawny. saying, really scrawny. <laughs> I can tell you don't eat. You eat with some muscle on, dog. Yeah, dog. Yeah. You eat a bulk. What were you saying? I wasn't asking for a meal. I was just letting you know how many people we had. Yeah. Sounds like a party. Well, I guess I'll be going then. Yeah. Yeah, sorry. We're... We're... We're assholes, kind of, to new people. He just kind of looks at you and just kind of slowly starts backing towards the carriage. That's nice to know. So sorry. I appreciate the thought. Um, have a nice day. What's your name? My name is Rado. Yeah, Rado. I'm just, I'm technically a neighbor, but I'm about a couple acres that way. And it just points off to like the east. I'll, uh, I'll see you guys around. And he just kind of lays down what looks like to be like some sort of baked good on the snow and then just kind of backs away and gets in his carriage. If you could tell them that this is what she made. And he just gets okay. in and, whoosh, and he just gets on and you just see the carriage just kind of take back off. Remember, if you don't fuck with us, we won't fuck with you. <laughs> okay, have a good day. All right. So, you guys, anybody grab the pie? I cast detect poison and like disease. I can't detect poison. <laughs> no, it seems to just be a pie. It just seems to be a normal pie. He, he, fuck this goes over and he pulls it open and it's even still warm. Looks to be some sort of like apple and peach possibly. So you guys make your way back up. And as you do so, you see Laden. He goes out and immediately he greets you. Hi! That's a back a little sooner than I thought. And he turns and he's like, Well, I held up mine to the bargain. And ah, I even found someone that I hired. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah. Like a hired permanent? permanent oh, God, let's say, you know, someone to watch over while you're all gone. I okay. think he's going to do great. He told me he's fought in many battles. And has adventured most of his life. Okay. Is he inside? Oh yeah, he's he's right inside. Well, he's which Harry Potter book had that really, really, really confident professor that was a complete sham? Gilderoy Lockhart. That's the third one. That's the second, second one. Second. second. Excuse me. That's that guy. Let's see this guy. <laughs> <laughs> We're suspicious. <laughs> We're suspicious already. So as you guys are sitting outside, he just looks around. Um, how was your trip? You got a lot of blood on you, fuck this. You didn't clean it all off, I can tell. It's blood. It's on most trips. I've been all right. some people. Well, do you want some food? We're actually just getting ready to eat lunch. As you look now, it's about midday. It's the third eat. day you make back. I know, but I'm just saying, does your beast, it doesn't eat either? Nope. The neighbors gave us a pie. And he just... I'll be taking that. Share, share. Okay, and he just yeah, immediately just... What kind of pie is it? Tastes fruity. Kind of apple-y. Are apples in season right now? Is there an apple orchard around here? Yeah. Okay. I mean, everybody around, at least where all land is, has farms. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, it just depends. Some Rondo. Rondo? Rondo? Rondo. Rodo. Yeah, Rodo. Rodo. Yeah, there. He's up to, up to, yeah, uh, neighbor. A yeah, house or two favorite. down, yeah, his wife yeah. can bake. I've okay. stolen from her quite a bit. You've stolen from her? Yeah. Oh. It's yeah. Like window pie on the window seal. Basically. Okay, okay. All right. They've been Before up, you guys came, I don't really have a means of making money, so. They've lived in the area a couple of years? Oh, for a while. Okay. Yeah. All right. They're old. They don't really keep to themselves. They're pretty nice. 
because we didn't know them, so we were kind of rude. And now that we know that they've been here a minute, and they're not. I don't want to be rude to everyone you meet. Not everybody is here to kill you. You, uh, you don't get this far in this profession that doing that. We have been tried to kill. We have been. I don't even. Then know. wait you until can... you see this guy. You may not want Just to steal wait. from everybody. Listen, yeah. this guy no he can wield a sword. I'm not gonna steal. You I mean, bring. He has a job now. You, yeah. 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 Just, yeah. Like I was saying, just be nice. Don't be an asshole to this guy. I've already hired him on. Be an asshole. Me. Okay. I paid him for the whole month. We have at least like three more weeks with this individual. Okay. How much did you pay him? Twenty gold. But he hasn't done shit yet. He said if he's gonna do anything, he needs more money. And I said he's gonna have to talk to you before he gets back. We could have him fight Grendrich. Grendrich is like, yeah. Good fucking luck with that, Gildo. How about you fight me? I would actually be under. I hear me, you're. Right. I'm offering you the chance to make some arrogant ass look like a bitch, but and you're getting angry at me. People already oh, want to kill me. Why do you want to add one more to this? <laughs> because, because I want to figure out the logistics. He just starts walking inside because past you're the mar- you. You're the one that's good at fighting. Not listening anymore. You just hear, and then, and he opens the door and just walks inside. He's like, "Who the fuck are you?" I like Grendrich, but I, I think my money. You just you just hear a, a small like disturbance on the inside, and then Juan just sits on the outside. Well, I guess Gregory's has already met him. Let's go. All right, you guys make your way in. As you do so, you see what looks to be about a six foot seven, six foot eight, um, maybe dripping wet. weighs about 150, 140 pounds. Can I cast identify on people? No. <laughs> I don't think so. He, I get like he's, a he's sitting there in like a like gray long padded pants with like a green tunic on with just lightly studded maybe leather gear. He's he's like six seven, but only like 140 pounds. Yeah. Damn. He's got this long sword sitting next to him that's probably five, six feet long, but is so thin you almost think it's not a blade. He just has it sitting on the table next to him. You walk in, you notice that there's a little bit more furniture that was not normally there since you've left. Blodden looks at him, whoa, right there he is. <laughs> you see Grandridge, he's getting a mug and he's laughing. Ha! Look at this little guy. His sword is as thin as his fucking arm. And he goes over and he picks it up and he's, and the guy's like, please don't touch my sword. What's your fucking name anyway, boy? And he's just, whoosh, whoosh. he's like, this isn't a blade. And then he sits it back down. You see him as he sits and then stands up. And this dude, literally, his tunic and stuff like start like hanging off of him almost. Like you no longer see his hands. They just kind of drape over him as he stands. My name is, uh, it's Phelan. Phelan McCruff. I came here, saw that um, you needed an armed. God, oh, I uh, offered up my my duties. Grendridge just looks at him. He's a fucking liar. Makes you say that, Grendridge. You don't know what he's done. He just kind of pushes him in the shoulder. Look at how frail he is. Why don't we have him fight a group of skeletons? <laughs> well, hold on. So he, he does look pretty scrawny, Grendridge. Blade does look tiny, but there's also venomous snakes that are the size, yay big, you know, that'll fucking kill you in one bite. True. So you can't always, can't always do that. That'll eat him in one bite. That's 100% true, but. Now as you look at him, he just kind of, after a moment, just goes back and sits and just goes back and is sipping on some sort of soup. He's like, Gregor just looks at him. See, what the fuck? What's... I don't like him already. You, you don't like him enough to like I'm not, him? I'm not fighting him. I'll break him. I'll fight. I mean, you yeah, but he's, he just pulls out his sword. We need somebody Here, good at fighting. Hold on to this. You see Phelan, he just kind of looks at him. Go on. Take it. Not taking your sword. Take it. I'm not taking your sword. He just kind of stands up and takes his ball and goes to the other side of the room. See? I don't like him. Why are we fucking pay me the 20 gold? I'll just stay here. Brother, we are just dead to a door. 
kind of looks a little nervous at you. Uh, yeah, duel. Yeah. Take it easy on you. On you? Oh, yeah. yeah. He just kind of looks you over, and then as he goes to sit down in the soup, he kind of like looks out of the corner of his eye, and you notice just for a moment as he sits down in the bowl, you just hear a chattering of the silverware for a moment. Is that blood on your armor? Yeah, hey, don't worry about it. Okay. <laughs> Hang on. I gotta go to the bathroom. He goes, and you just I'll see him outside. walk. Yeah. Meet you outside. He goes, Greg is looking, he needs just smiling at you. Fucking pussy, I'm telling ya. It's starting to look that way. No, now, starting now. I mean, I'm saying. Now, now you go to the bathroom and you just before, hear. Before it was a guess. <laughs> now it's, it's an educator. Is he throwing he up in, in the bathroom? He has a specialty sword. Yeah, it's, it's, opinions are going up. Yeah, and is now he's throwing up into the bathroom? It's fucking what it sounds like, doesn't it? Have you seen me? Yeah. Mm -hmm. you are he's in covered in entrails. True, yes. true. <laughs> but come on, I would at least bluff myself. He. Mm -hmm. Line. Line. And then you just look at Lawton and he's just like. We have to know who's, you know, we have to. We're hiring. Got to know he told us he's been on many adventures. Okay. So have we. Yeah. Friend Dooji just goes up to the door. Hey, and he's. <laughs> Fanning, get the fuck out here. Oh, one second. He gets some stuff and you just see covered whatever soup he was just eating all over his face. All right. Yeah, um, yeah, bit, yeah. What, what is it? All right. So, what adventures have you been on? Anything notable? And he just kind of looks for you at a moment. And he just kind of pulls up his tunic and his sleeves, and he just kind of starts wiping his face. Um, I went to. Uh, uh yeah. You know the rendezvous and the ramparts up in. The rocks region, you know? Granger's like, it's a lot of fucking R's. Rendezvous, I've never heard of that. Tell me something I know. Uh, I went to the, um, the layout, you know? Through the teleport scroll thing. And went to another plane. I've fought in many places. Granger just turns and he looks back at you. You're fucking lying, Phelan. I don't even know what you're even saying now. Just making up things. Well, I have a blade! And he's like, and Greg just goes over and he takes it and he's like, and he just starts to bend it. And it just breaks and almost bends. That's a piece of shit sword, Phelan. That's not gonna do shit in combat. Now he starts like trembling. Laden's looking at him. Been here all week. He told me he could fight. Have you seen him? Told me he showed up here in... Grandridge. Have you stolen anything, Phelan? He just kind of looks around. He looks down at his sword. No. Frightful presence. <laughs> <laughs> so what does that do exactly? It's a 16 wisdom save where he's frightened. Yeah, but now he's gonna be frightened. Yeah, yeah disadvantage. Yeah, he's yeah, frightened. he's super frightened. He, huh, you just start seeing piss run down his leg, and it starts visibly going on the floor. Granger's standing right in front of him. Oh, now, don't piss on my floor. Come on, answer the man's question. Oh wait, better yet, who are you, really? Now. Oh. I'm just okay. gonna use that on some random guy. Okay, so you fifteen Christmas save. Nope, natural four. Okay, so you guys have him here in Grendred's first question, since he was already in the process as you just cast this life. Who are you really? And you see him. My name is Phelan McGruff. Okay. He just turns around to Grendridge. You guys have anything to ask him? Why'd you lie to work here? He's scared of me, by the way. He just looks at yeah, you. He's in Zoda Proof. And he, yeah, he can't lie. He doesn't have to prove that he can't lie. I was hired. Spy. I was and? told that, uh... 
certain group of individuals were sent here. I arrived shortly after you left. That's it. We were sent here. I, um... No, the group of slavers we killed were sent here. We were just passing by and we... I was, <laughs> I was hired by... Created a life. An individual. It was cloaked, but I was only paid in gold up front. Sent it to my family. Then I headed here. I met him in Albazine. When you were hired, uh, this man in a cloak, the cloak ran it all, and the bag that you were given, told Bolt, it was in a bag. Was there any iconography on them? It was. The cloak wasn't red, but his robes underneath were. The bag did have an emblem of a fire logo. <coughs> Fuck. I was told that any information supposed to bring back whenever you guys would leave or come back. I think they're... What else you guys got? I don't like liars. I don't like spies. There's a reason we're distrustful of the neighbors, we just met those people. They gave us pie. So, the fact that you were hired, I understand you're just a dude. You got hired by some guy to do some job. It's nothing personal. But, that being said, you know where we live. You were sent here specifically. The, the individual who hired you sent you here specifically. They already knew where we were. Yes. Fuck. When I came, you had left maybe a day or two. When I got here, I was told to do only gather information and to report on if you all went to the Contravens Holt or a town called Landem. Okay. I don't know if we can let you leave. That being said, letting you leave actually probably wouldn't hurt us much either. Though. Wait a minute. What if he stays and we make him feed false information and a scene spying for? As soon as you say that walks up, that is a great idea. What if like we what if we turn the spy on our side. Uh, I don't think he's high enough for us to like send him back and give us and I think he's only good for sending them false stuff. No, oh, but listen, as Dennisine yeah. now kind of walks forward. If he's supposed to report back, maybe we follow him back to his destination upon his meeting. Balin, where are you to meet this individual? Balin speaks up. There's a town to the east of here. I was told that many went to gather outside of Landem. There's supposedly grounds there. Great magical presence. This individual thinks you shall head there. Soon. So there's already a bunch of people gathering in this town. One individual. Okay. He believes that there is a great magical presence in this town. There is a great magical presence. In okay. Yeah, it's me, Guild War. So now, <laughs> like, <laughs> now that we've heard about this town, so I don't want to go now. Can we like see if I can make some of that cool metal downstairs? Or head out to kill a spy? Well, we're not in a hurry. Uh, we might be. The town of Landem, uh, uh, relatively close to where I woke up. 
fucking button up them ears. Close his ears, Phelan. Shut the fuck up. You just see him this and you just... This is why I need to learn the spell, guys. Yeah. Yeah, he's... Support God, Phelan. All right. Devastine. Why don't you pause? We have more rooms. Yeah, we can, we can, we can, you know... <laughs> Let's go next to that fancy metal so I can do you that. You see, Grandra, she just kicks open another door. Life, you stay in here with him. If anything fucking goes wrong, actually, you go all go in here. I'll stay in here with life. I was going to say, I, yeah, that's that's fine. Dennis, fuck, do I trust Dennis? Dennis, should I trust you? The answer's no. I'll tell you the name of the secret organization if you let me in. Okay. Fine. Fine, that's, yeah, that's fine, that's fair. All right, you give me a secret, I give you a secret. That's fine. Let's head downstairs. All right, so you guys go down to the first level. Yeah. Okay, Laden, so. Laden is up there. This, is this the level with the metal in the wall? No. No. That's, I want to go to that level. Well, you guys are here at the first level. Let's Stone hit this first. Cuts. You get there, this is where Orm was planting some of his things. Yep. They're starting to grow quite exponentially quick in the week you've been gone. They are about a foot taller than you now. They're potatoes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fuck. All right. They've <laughs> been like bundled up There's and kept because they were growing wild. It looks yeah. as if they've up kept them almost like a tomato plant to keep them growing upwards as they were burrowing down. So now they've kind of just been pulling them out and vining them upwards and like packing dirt around them. That's awesome. It's fucking. Eight from days. All right. All right, Dennisine. You want to go first or you want me to go first? Is I Gildor this... thinks we should go down another level. Is this place safe? <laughs> Not another level safer. Do you have, do you have okay. any way of detecting? Um, I have detect if, magic. If we're being spied on, would that help? You see him, and he just waves it around. Other than you all and whatever is beneath this floor, don't really detect much magic. Is it the metal? We need to go down. Oh, fuck! That's a whole <laughs> different fucking problem right Can now. You wait like 10 yeah, but minutes? we need to make sure if the metal is what he's detecting, or if there's something else down there. And then you can go down. You're fine. You're really welcome minutes. to go down. Ten minutes. Fuck you guys. <laughs> right there. <laughs> Just downstairs. All right, Dennisine. Uh, we're the Moonlight Marauders, right? We uh, were we were at one point associate associates of a Moonlight Lapidary, oh, and you went fucking missing. <laughs> yeah, we believe the rocks have him. Um, he's not missing. I know where he's at. Okay, the rocks. Okay, hey, that's one no. answer we've kind of oh. been looking for a little bit. Oh. That's actually super helpful. We'll come back. We'll circle around that. Uh, we kind of all got in this business. Because we are guarding a gem, like capital G gem. He knows. Yeah, I believe. I believe in, we know that. You pretty much know our backstory. Yeah, we know. Well, I'll just I'll reach into my pouch and I'll bring out the sliver of the green gem. And he immediately is like, "Cool." Yeah, we have another one, and I know Do you where. You still have your. Yeah. He just kind of looks down for a moment. You see frustration immediately in his face. He was, he was there. He was there. When he, when he lost it, yeah. Right. <laughs> but he was not sure if you yeah. maybe he got it back after or... After she absorbed it, he disappeared. Yeah. That was the last we saw. He just... He didn't even have he it. He shakes his head. She didn't even have it when we were at the vault. I know much of what you all speak. I'm a part of a group with Pug Jameson, known as the Unbroken Allegiance. I can trust you all. I will tell you that we have been spying on the Red Council for many years. We know that they are up to something, and we know that they have been doing and plotting things for many years. They have been taking children, they have been conspiring with Audre. We think a Duradale Heret, as well as the Rocks region. We think that a great battle among the Cloud regions will be happening soon, a political battle. We fear that the coming elections are not going to go very well. Each region has their own election. You know this. Every year they go on, 
Nothing usually happens that is new. But there is word recently that the Red Council seeks to gain power with this Durdo Herit and the Rocks family to join and control all of the regions together, eliminating the power from within each region, destroying any hope, democracy, and eliminating all forms of government in current state. If this happens, there will be outright war. Hexwo will rebel, Audrey will rebel, and most of the Rocks region will be left at the orders of Torox and whatever he wishes to do. If we cannot get to Torox before he sways in which way he chooses his army to go, we may not be able to stop his hammer from falling. If he sides with the Red Council, it will be nothing but obliteration. What the Red Council wants would be total total dictatorship on what they view. There will be no choice. Most of the mages will be sent down to the surface into the prisons that we know exist. The Rocks region has had prisons there that they send many of these individuals down. Well, like all mages? All mages. Any, rocks, any magic? Anybody that is speaking out against this or has heard about it has ended up in one of these prisons. So it's not specifically mages. No, they send down those that are powerful, though, to possibly contest them. They have some weird asphyxiation with memory magic. Oh, that, that explains, explains a lot. lot. So I'm guessing this is some kind of magical prison? If Not sure. I've never mages. been there. Are we going to play D&D, Escape from Butcher Bay? Listen, we I know that many were brought here over the last years from the surface. Why would they send airships back down? Why would these prisoners go back down? <coughs> they must be killing them off, separating them from the major population, because they know something. Grendridge just turns through the other door, kind of hearing this, kind of peeps in, noticing the individual is fine, kind of walks in. <coughs> Could they have been trying to send me to one of those prisons, and maybe you? That what those assailants were for? Is that what they were after when they said we knew too much? Can you tell still, me the Rocks family has a gulag. Possibly, and we think that they're working with Third Al Herit. There's some sort of connection between these regions. Who's Third Al Herit again? He is uh, the Mac main orphan, the, the main like, priest, <laughs> or whatever of some kind of religion. You, you know that Third Al Herit has been. Named as some sort of religious leader. It's the one we've learned from sending from life. In, in Penal. The one who's gathering all the kids at the temple yeah. in Audrey. And has sent out hits for That's more orphans to be gathered and such. Okay, I have multiple suggestions right now. So, I think for four rocks, we should go after his power base. Which would include everything in his region, probably not a good idea. Uh, we to go have, after yet. We have a couple things. I'm talking long term goals. Uh, we can circle back to that. So you say that the Red Council and Herod are attempting to uh, work with the Rocks. Are they trying to work with Tor specifically, or his uh, or his son, the leader of the Minor? I don't know. I'm one in the wrong. We have one letter that says it is from Tor Rocks, so we are unsure. We have not seen Tor Rocks leave his estate in a couple of years. Not been in the public eye, and we do not know why. So it is hard to discern or ascertain any real information on his movement or what he's doing. Getting into the Rocks region is nearly impossible. At least, myself. He knows that I work for the Unbroken Allegiance, and knowing this, he will not let me in. Quick question. Um, you have a lot of knowledge about history of, like, Hexwell in, like, correct? What? Do you know anything about Cryptic? I do. 
Can we get like some general information about him and his existence? I know that the heretics know the most about him. They directly dealt with him and his banishment and whatever dark magics they were dealing with. I helped aid them and we understood that whatever dark magic he was dealing with had to deal with a different plane of existence. Well, yeah, he's a shadow demon now. Well, we know that this plane of existence that he was traveling to may have been part of the Abyss, or even maybe part of the Nine Hells. We know that he traveled there. When he came back, his form was changed into this shadow demon, shadow fiend that you... When he came back, we were only able to contain him to the bridge, which he magically altered. At the time, it was just a lone pillar, a small region, an island. And over 30, 40, 50 years, he's crafted what it is now. A lost field of moving so pendulums. So my question, hypothetically, um, Cryptic is a super powerful shadow demon from what we've seen. Um, and he likes to collect souls of justifiably super fucked up people. If we gave him the souls, hypothetically speaking, of Torox, the religious fanatic, and the Red Council, you think it would be worth bargaining? Because we're probably gonna end up fighting, killing these guys anyway. You want more power? You want more power from this guy? No, I want I want free pass through the bridge. No one's ever crossed the bridge freely. Freely? Okay, I was gonna say we I was gonna say we have not freely. And met <laughs> so like I think we cross the bridge freely. Cryptic allows us allows us to cross the bridge freely. Depends on what he wants. Does Cryptic know you had anything to do with... It's hard to say what Cryptic... It's hard to say what Cryptic is. I'm just saying, you could very well be on his... For all we know, since you all have met Cryptic... You could be hearing what we're speaking of right now. Wait, isn't daylight down here? No. We need a way... We need a room without shadows. How do we get a room without shadows? Mm. I'm saying this out loud, Skilk. Because he's a shadow demon. That means he most likely could hear us. We can't escape cryptic. Holy shit. Who knows? We don't know how fucking cryptic works. We're freaking out right now. <laughs> can, can you control it? Can you control what he can do? No. Then why are you worried? It is entirely outside of your control. For all we know, we could be summoned by him in five minutes. Awesome. Immediately summons us. <laughs> <laughs> so there is a this conspiracy of that going on. Uh, essentially, the entire cloud top region being consumed by warp. That's worrisome. Uh, which definitely makes the the problem we came down here for certainly less important, or at least look less important. Yeah, I can't. Take all my time studying magic in my free time if I'm using it to murder people in war. Cryptic has it out for a lot of professors and people at this. What if? But we... everyone, every professor we saw on that list has been proven to be a part of this corruption. So what if we somehow could get? That's what I was going for. Yeah. But how? Then he said he can unlock the secrets of this cool book I have. <laughs> Denison looks. So it's a it's a win win for me. How, how would you help him, other than claiming those souls? I think whatever Cryptic did on the bridge, like anchored him to it. I have a feeling, or he can't leave it for like efficiencies reasons. I think he sealed to the bridge. I think the only way he was able to communicate outside of the bridge is sealed, or through the curse that he puts foot on us. Right, call his name. Maybe later. Maybe not right now. Yeah, do I need to like go in the bathroom and like say yeah. it in the mirror? <laughs> yeah. Red rum. Go into a really dark room, cast darkness on yourself. Yeah. Who knows? Who knows? <laughs> like full on ritual. Some so at this thing. point, yeah. Denison just kind of turns. We got sidetracked there. So the we, only what was the secret though? Yeah, we <laughs> never we got distracted by cryptic talk. The only oh. real 
Yes, pertinent information is we are going to most likely need Pug or his brother or the lapidary in the rocks. If you have that gem, there are others. So, yeah, so this right here, the third, I know where another third is. And I know he has the third third. And at least one of those is near land. And the other guy who has the third third is there as well. It's possible that two thirds are near land. And so if we go deal with that, we could have an entire gym. Do we know what the gym does? Green. Uh, got these gauntlets that has a, what looks like some of it embedded in it. Um, Just try shoving it in there. I thought about it. We'll hold off for a second. Uh, it had it can it alters my ability to shapeshift in, into different creatures. So my working theory is something to do with. Okay, I need you to hold for like ten minutes. Nature I'm gonna cast identify as a ritual to me? on the gem. Well, that's fine. Oh, on the gem. That's we fine. could probably have done that. Probably. <laughs> Are we literally taking a ten minute break in the middle of this? Uh, no, I'm no like you he put the gem. Oh, I can put the gem. Yeah, I'm casting do. this. I'm listening right. to you guys talk. Okay, uh, I'm just like that's fine. Now, as you do this and you go to cast this, you hear in the other room, quick, <laughs> and life. I need you to roll me an athletics check. I got through athletics. Yep. Who's with us? It's me. What was it? Ten. Ten. So, in a quick motion, you see now that Grendridge has kind of came into the other room, that Phelan looks as if he is going to make a break for the door. You see him quickly get up, not grab his sword or anything, and make it just past you and burst out the front door. The rest of you guys quickly don't see this. The door is partly ajar. But you just hear this slight commotion, and then poof, and that's all you hear. How far away from, am I from Abe? To do anything? Uh, with uh, that athletics, no. You were kind of caught yeah, off guard. Outside the door. Yeah, so he just goes right outside the door. You guys see him running. Life, you can act now, but he's just outside the door. You can see him. Say it one more time. <laughs> All right, so you turn, you cast it. What do you roll? I think it's a 22. Yep, that I definitely that hits. Is... 12 first damage. Okay, so with that, you see him immediately poof, go face down about five to six feet out front of the door right into the snow. You see him, and then he turns, rolls over, and he puts his hand up. I'm sorry! He has basically tears just streaming down his face now. He tries to kind of like backwards army crawl through the snow away from you. Do you attack again? Drag him back. Okay, so you go up there and you just grab onto his collar and you start just dragging him back in. You close the door and you see Lawton kind of put one of the chairs up in front of the door so that way escape the next time won't be as easy. You kind of throw him down to the center of the floor and he's now back under your control. Now, yeah, why did you think that was a good idea? Say it one more time. Yeah, why did you think that was a good idea? He just looks at you. I just have a feeling that you guys are going to kill me. It couldn't just be. I did it. Well? If you want to kill me, we can get it when we first find out it's fine. It's not easy. True, but now you've gotten the information, so what are you going to do with me? So while that's happening, you guys are in the other room. You guys heard this, it stops. You guys kind of, Grunger peeks back open, sees the guy in the middle of the floor. Doesn't seem too worried, comes back in. Dennis turns and looks. So, 
We know there's gems possibly outside Landen. We know that we are somehow being possibly tracked or they know our whereabouts or at least our movements. Red Council knows I'm part of the Unbroken Allegiance and most likely you all are working with me. Or at least we're acquaintances. They're trash. Can't over there? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Is that what I see? I'm going for it. Oh. Yes. So overshot it. I think that if we are to do anything, we need to make sure that our next steps are at least thought and planned out. I have a question. Random. When we very first when we first met you, you solved your puzzles. When we asked you about the gems, you know. Were you not revealing? I knew that my test was not for necessarily incantations only. When we first asked you about the gems, you seemed like you didn't know much. Because why would I lead on? I, was I, I, I understand your... I don't know much about them. I know their existence, but what perks my knowledge is why they are really needed now. Why after this time? We've known of them. They've been a myth, supposedly. Is my identifying on them? Yes. Um, and you, you'll notice that. <laughs> and Play it as, as you, <laughs> as, as we found out more about these gems, I had to reach out to a certain Ufan. He... Percy? Yes. He also works for the Elite. Ah, oh, sweet. One of my patches teleports me directly to his shop. <coughs> yeah, but he probably has more. We, we knew you'd come back. We've been in conversations. The night that you actually saved his shop, we were meeting. The individual that was in there trying to look around in his shop was information on our group, trying to find if he was connected. Is that why he had like a dead man switch when he was caught? Yes. Neat. We believe that individual was cursed and sent. He was a manifestation of some sort of explosion that was supposed to kill Percy when he found him. There have been attempts on assassinations on the members for years now, though now they are really becoming serious. We didn't know why until now recently, with you showing up with the gems. I thought, what better time to bring a group of adventurers together, so I brought together the incantations and offered all the old students to come back and try and gain the new ones that we found. I made the tests hard, challenging, wall passed. Now we sit here, you've gained a new ally and lost one, but yet still are here. The gems are still lost, we need to find them. We need to know why, if not for our reason, why to keep them out of others' grasp. We must destroy them if we are not to use them. Or at least seal them away. We know that whoever these individuals are working with, and he just holds up this small kind of parchment that has been etched for years. You can tell it's very weathered. And you see the flame symbol with an eye in the very center of it. We believe that whatever this is, possibly helping them or guiding them in their journey, we think it may be tied in some way. Now, you see Dennisteen kind of walk off to the side. Really all I have to say. I think you all need to decide what your next step is and take it firmly. Know exactly what your movements are. Be all on the same page. Or if one of you falter, that may be the weakness, that cryptic that the Red Council, that the Rocks family need to gain more information. 
We need to tighten down the home. We need to make sure that our security and that no one can magically possibly lure in on what we Well, do you know Mordecai's secret sanctum? I do not. Well, shit. But maybe we reach out to some of the other guilds that maybe could help us for some coin. They might be able to help. You still maintain ties to the heretics? I do. They would, would they be an ally? They would. Can you have one of them cast Mordecai's Sanctum on our house? We may be able to have them help for a short amount of time. They may be able to... I may be able to speak with Orion. Maybe cast some sort of shield. I know that they use it here in Inventus to help with the storms. May be able to alter something to help with maybe magical scrying or at least block messages or anything being sent in or out. We can at least start on it. Have an idea. I'll reach out to Orion and see if get back with me but in the meantime we need to make sure that who we communicate with we trust we need to make sure that any looks inside at Phelan on the floor that the people you hire don't hire other people they don't trust you need to make sure it's safe right now we don't know what is safe Grunge is just sitting there. Well, shit, that's a lot to take in, Dennis Dean. I'm just, uh, I'm just going to be honest. I can keep down our homestead here. I can be our god. But I'm going to need help when anything magical comes. You're telling me that people might be scrying or looking in on us, trying to ascertain our movements. I can't fucking do shit against that. So well, I guess we need to get a plan of action, eh, group? We need a bunch of lead paint. Now, you, you see, Dennistein, what is this thing you are speaking of in the basement, Gil? Oh, there's like this wall of metal. It broke life's, it broke life's mace. And I can make stuff out of it. I also want to know what metal it is. I, yeah. I'll take like no time at all. Well, when we're done here, I want to see it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, the idea. Oh. Yeah, oh, yeah, that's important. Yeah, that's a little smidgen. Okay, yeah. so the green one. Um, you know this to be a fragmented part of a soul that was from a individual known as Ganon. Great. This sound. This sound. Great. Right. Is he a part of the Triforce? This. Is he gonna be a pick box that tries this, to eat me at some point? Please tell me. This is a some sort of gem that has been attuned with what you can believe to be some sort of life force that was separated from one of the original parties of the Dereverence. Part of the soul of a guy named Gin. Yeah, it was sealed away in this. And this is one of but many fractured pieces. I believe that this is one of one. Does that give you any PTSD, repressed memories, anything? Uh, this, this is all you'd really be able to identify without it being completed. Is that part of this gives you a great ability to heal, restore, revive those around you, as well as drain life from those around you. Original member of. So it's almost like a like a gem of life giving or life taking. Spells and healing, healing, draining. And you got this one in her location in her locker, correct? Correct. So you know this one is. Yeah, nothing more. Okay. Yep. That's cool. So it turns out these gems are souls of people. I mean, I kind of assumed that. I assumed that they were souls of dragons, though, and not souls of the members of... Uh, the members of... Okay, now I want you to do something. You know? I want you to shove it in that gauntlet. <laughs> oh, actually, this is one of four. Oh, okay. Four now. Oh, uh, no, I mean, fourth one is third's last one. 
Okay. No, it was a third, but with the identify, you know that it was broken into many pieces because you have some in your yeah. gauntlet, yeah. but there's a fourth piece. Ooh. Okay, okay. Three are known, but the fourth one with identify, you know, that's why I was like, wait, which one was it? Because I'm like, oh. I don't want to. Yeah. But the uh, one you have has nothing like, the only one has like no flavor to it, the one you found. I know, I know. The other one's like paragraph, 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 and the one is like Cassandra Volt's Manor Walk. Yeah, I'm like, shit. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna go check that metal now. The I got one more question for for Grant, uh, not Grant, Dennis Dean. Dennis Dean, yeah. uh, what the fuck is Conflux? As he looks at you, his eyes narrow. That's where we're gonna take a break. Because <laughs> I gotta go to the bathroom and I need a drink. All right, Seth, we're gonna take a quick break. Um, we'll be back in like literally five ish, ten minutes.
All right. So, jumping back into it. So we left off with you asking. Are you, are you on? Oh yeah, we're good. Are we're you? Good. you sure? God, yeah, we're good. Oh yeah. We probably should be so we left off with you asking Dennisine, what is Conflux? Yeah. Where he seriously looked Did back you at you. The mics? Yeah, yeah, we're good. He looks at you. Did you unmute the mics? <laughs> and it's <Are> recording. <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh. yeah. He looks. Complex is a very old magic. The only origin of it was during the Calamity. Sky Calamity happened. Kind of rained out. Fallout. Over the surface. We thought that might have been main reasoning for what was happening on the surface lane. But we were unsure what was really happening. But we later found out that some of those gems were infused by the Conflux magic. We think it was used by Relanoff Draconius. First magic user in the area. Upon doing so, we think he infused some of the land with the Conflux when he casts his magic. I think they're almost like nodes. Is Mirror's Conflux sound like it's timey wimey bullshit? It would explain why everybody up here believes a lot more time has passed. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I'm saying this out loud we've, while we've, he's talking. We've looked for it. The only places we believe it may be within the mountainscapes. All of the cloud top region. Most of the mountains that are high are black. Almost like black rock. After a certain point, it seems whatever magic raised them, used them, and almost sparkled them. It's almost as if they were burnt or crystallized over many of years. The only place we've gone to look. Never found it though. It's possible that these gems are infused with conflux? We believe. Not quite sure where that random magic could be getting or its made source with from. Conflux. Possibly. Or a combination of the two. Well they still have some sort of magic power left in them. Could possibly be of the reasoning. Uh, do you know a name Ganon? Only from the history. Well, he's in that. The only Ganon that could be in that part of the legend of the Reverence Party. Great story that was told of them fighting amongst the cloud tops, sealing away some great evil threat during the Calamity. That's the only thing we know of the Ganon. Oh, that blue dragon lady was probably. You see, you see Grandridge walk forward. Who is members of this the Reverend? Is there more than just this Ganon? Ganon turns. I know that Relanoff was their leader. There was a Whitehall. Azuna and Erotic. Was Azuna the name of the, the. It was. Okay. You're the one who fucking grabbed the gem. Azuna. I was too busy getting fucking. Mind controlled? Mind controlled. Whitehall, Erotic, Azuna, Ganon. And we. It was Azuna. Relinov. Uh, uh, Azuna was blue. Yep. Ganon is green. Yep. Whitehall green. was blue. Red is question mark yep. slash fire lord. Whitehall and Roddick is unknown. Yeah. And then he goes on at the very end and says, We know that four rocks in possession of the yellow. So, and then we also know that there's white uh, gems. No of any other color. Right. 
there's a red gem. Red is question mark Fire Lord. That is what I yeah. put down as Guild War in my little book Fire that, is, Lord. that I have. Well, that's I a had, starting place. I had visions when I had the gem. Fire Lord is basically night terrors. Fire Lord was infiltrating my soul, is what it felt like. Well, I really hope Ron on the fire. So the, the red gem consumed the blue gem. That can't be. Yeah. And we know of white ingredient at this point. Okay, whose fault is the red gem eating blue gem? Hmm? Fuck this? Hmm? Well, let's not argue about it. We can sit about it and talk about it all day. For the fucking ice dragon, man. You just fuck kill it. How about this? We have one in our sight, and he points at the green one. Let us maybe start with one. Then they can't steal it. Let's figure out metal or... We can go this answer. <laughs> All right, so <laughs> as you sigh and you kind of break off... The, Why do you sigh? You're just going to be like, everything okay up there? After a moment, life, you're fine. Um, after a moment, if you want to... Um, just kill him. <laughs> I mean, yeah, life, are you joining the group or are you going to stay up with this guy? <coughs> I'm going to keep matching this man. All right. So, essentially, you guys then go further down. Um... I'm before we go down, I'm gonna go up and I'm gonna cast Conjure Animals. Okay. I'm gonna summon two dire wolf. Okay. Up and in your, yeah. and I'm gonna tell them that if this if this guy, Phelan, crosses the the any threshold in the house, that they can just rip. Yeah. All right, I'll so, say that out loud in front. Of yeah, he just yeah. kinda looks at you, already shit in his pants, yep. covered in his own piss. He just kinda I'm not gonna move. I'm I understand that I was wrongdoing. Now, you guys make your way down to the second level. You guys move down the life. Are you joining them going downstairs to where the ore is? Yeah, the dire wolves are. Yeah, you're good. Oh, I was planning on me climb up there too. Oh. All right, I mean, if you want to say you can. But the rest of you, you guys make your way down. As you guys do so, Denison looks at it. He kind of goes up and he... Touches it. Broke a weapon, you said. Yes. That's what I'm doing right now. I'm not casting it, not ritual casting. All right, so you're casting identify. And if it makes any difference, I am now Need a history check proficient in blacksmithing, so I would know metals. Seventeen. Okay. Enhanced ability, you. Oh my God! Man, it's too late. So as you as you look at this, you notice that on the surface layer, it's almost like a very boring gray. But you notice that as Grendridge and Denistine kind of push some of the rock and dirt away from the edges, Denistine kind of looks closer. You see that it becomes almost like a prismatic color. And that just the outside seems to have been weathered or something from the air or other things you're not quite sure. As you feel, kind of source this out, you realize that this is like a large ley line of like magical output that your house basically sits on. This travels from what you can tell, definitely. About five to ten feet tall and with like almost a huge cylinder like tube almost of some huge prismatic ley line kind of cuts off right where your house and is. And the so. build up is making metal of the magic? Like what like, like, like hard water metal? building up. You know it's sulfate things pushing out from the ground. Nothing really important but on the inside that goes further throughout the ground. You, you take a couple minutes and you see Denistine, you know, really take a staff and kind of like gouge out the side and you see it just starts growing with color, like rainbows, almost just translucent. Can I and... use Fabricate to pull the built-up metal and like make it into like just a big bar? You you try and the main ley line doesn't. You rip off No, I want, all I, want, the... I, want the, I want I want all the 
metal that's not connected. That, that's like what, I'm, I'm like skimming the top. Around, of the yeah, you're like it pulls off like some of the dark and gray just rips off around the edges. You kind of sift out some of the like stone and debris. It keeps on going indefinitely. With your intelligence, you probably won't find an end. Okay. You can possibly I just. I'm going to use a pickaxe. I'm going to hit it with a pickaxe. Okay. You're not there. No, he is. He is. Did he, he come down? Yeah, he why, why, what yeah. part of I'm going to use fabricate to pull the metal without fucking hitting the ley line? Don't we all get? <laughs> yeah. I'm, hitting I the ley know. line with something doesn't sound like a good idea. I mean, we've already broken it. All right, so are you using your. Do you have your magical pickaxe? It's, or is it just a. It's just a normal pickaxe, right? Yeah. Seth, it's just a normal pickaxe. Yeah, I think I think it's just a normal pickaxe. Two gold, yeah. All right, yeah. Just roll me an attack. Just the twenty, correct? Yep. TPK. TPK. All those orphans gone. Whole house exploded. That's, we just did a layer of the pickaxe. I can't hear him when you're talking. What'd you say, Seth? Just the roll. Just the roll. I just need to know what you rolled to hit. Five. Five. So you you rear back. Um, it's quite large. It's not like you're really gonna miss it. So when you wheel back, you kind of. In a manner of which slam into it a little bit harder, I think, than you were expecting. And as you do so, now that it's kind of been cleaned off, the last time you hit it, you'd hit it on like the dull grade, sulfated, like outside, broke immediately. You felt kind of the rumble and the echo through. This time, when you hit it, I need everybody to give me a constitution saving throw. 20! There goes the Uh, Grand Ridge and Denison fail. I need this, this to... This is a saving throw? Yeah, and this needs a pass eight. Everybody's plus three. All right, and this needs a pass eight. 24. 23. It needs a pass of 24? No. All right, so fail. Everybody fails. I can't, even, I can't even pass that. But no, I got 14 I plus eight. 16. Six to fail. All right, so as this happens, you all immediately... I don't think anybody can pass it. You, you see this light in the air around you, like, concave in on where he hit it. It seems as if all the air and even light or anything just kind of sucks in. It's silent for about one, maybe a little bit longer than a second. And then it almost reverberates back out. You feel this huge reverberation and like a force explosion. You don't see debris or anything really kick back. Just this force. You guys are all just boom, slammed into the walls. You guys all take 20 plus uh, 15, 35 points of force, um, d bludgeoning damage. You guys are all just boom, slammed in. Your eardrums are all bleeding and you all go immediately deaf. Don't have ears. That's fine. Um, yeah, well, if you do, yeah, yeah. you then have your sight completely just blinded by the light. You see nothing. You guys are almost like just paralyzed for about an hour. Some of you go unconscious and you then come to, Lauding comes walking down and seeing just this massive kind of blowback. You even see after you guys start coming to, parts of your like wall has just been blown back out the opposite way. You see about 20 to 30 foot of just dirt and debris has just been blown out and part up into the next row where you're growing potatoes are now just <laughs> falling down through from the previous um, floor above you. And there, where once was a floor, making it a, you know, the first level, has now become just one whole floor. You've blown out the floor above you. So now... The entire floor? Yeah, the entire floor. God damn it. So now above you, everything that once was is gone. So now you have about a 25 to 30 feet up to get back into your tower. You guys are now 30 foot-ish underground. God and damn. now you have this above you. Now you feel just this... Almost like a reverberating, like heartbeat underneath, and after about another hour or so, it softly, slowly 
diminishes, but you still kind of hear it, almost like a you know, like a vibrating metal just kind of lingering. Kind of feel it in the ground. Um, you guys take a moment, you guys go up out to kind of check on what happened, and you see like a long crackle ripple above the ground that goes on for as long as your eye can see where the dirt is just kind of bulged up and crackled a little bit, almost like an earthquake. Mm -hmm. That's what you see. So how about next time we don't hit the ley line with the pickaxe? Yeah, that that hurt. The scene the pickaxe is destroyed. Oh, it's destroyed. And as you and guys in your skull. And as you guys go through, you notice that from part of the debris on the back end of your house now where you saw some of the, you know, ground go in the twenty to thirty feet were pushed in, the part of the ground is kind of just sunk. And part of your house is kind of just slowly, softly tilted a little bit. Still probably structurally sound, but... Mm. And that's fix that. Yep. Probably collect all the potatoes. Yeah. Yep. And about five minutes go by and you guys just hear a... Ah! Ah! You guys kind of run over to the other side out where your caravan is and about 20 to 30 feet off you just see the tree in Oxford out there. And part of it has just kind of slumped over and collapsed from the reverberation, the earthquake. And you see part kids, of it. Right? Yes. And part of it has just slumped down and just beaten down part of his shoulder. And you see him kind of just roll over and it is just completely smashed. And it's almost like an empty toothpaste bottle just kind of hanging from like his shoulder. Time to lay on hands to fix his arm. He kind of just goes, and he's just hanging from it as he kind of just comes running up from about... 30, 40 feet out from the side of the house. And he's just is hanging there. And you just see blood dripping from his fingers. That's killed him on multiple times. <laughs> you, you cast him, and then as he gets to you guys, he just kind of slumps down. You guys go over. Uh, life, you tend to him. He kind of comes to for a moment. His arms slowly regaining some of the muscle tissue and whatnot, but it's probably going to take a couple days to like fully gain full strength back, but it seems to be okay. He kind of turns. He's like, oh! It just fell out of nowhere. I I was getting ready to hit it, and then it just collapsed. You guys look around for the most part. The land seems okay. How big is the empty chamber? Um, On the outside of your house, it's about... No, under. Oh, under? 30-ish, 35 feet. I can use fabricate to make a pillar, because I never got the chance to fucking use it. <laughs> so now, yeah, so basically you're... Bottom story now immediately opens to a chasm that's about 35 feet wide, and it starts at about 40 feet wide and tapers to about 25. So you have like an upside down triangle with the top lopped off. We just make another floor again. Put the floor back. Uh, no. And you just hear it's too much floor. A couple of Someone potatoes still just do. dropping down to the pit slowly. Just. What are you guys doing? I'm going to use um, Fabricate to make a pillar of stone. All right, so you bring that's one down up. there. Yep. That's the debris. Yep. And I'm going to, the part that's dipping, yep. I want it to be like under that. All right, so you bring it up and you level it. You notice that it probably brings it up a solid foot or two. Solidifies land. It's a good patch for it. It'll we'll probably last a little. Oh, good stone. Oh, of course. <laughs> I mean, you have one pillar on a whole castle. Or tower, I think. You're gonna need more. You had 35 foot of compacted dirt and stone holding it up. One singular pillar that's 35 feet and five feet wide isn't gonna right, replace that. Make another pillar. Next day, make yeah. another pillar. Yeah, fill in that hole, repatch that. A couple days, you're good. So. Okay, we're gonna take like a week break. Um, I'm gonna <laughs> read my book. I would love. I would love a week of down. And but every day I'm gonna use. Now. I'm gonna use fabricate to make a new pillar because we don't want to ruin our house well are you all doing that you guys want to take yeah, a week hold down on, hold on did he, you pulled like some metal around this ley line i never got the chance he hit it with the fucking pickaxe <laughs> he well, said he did that after you did that what yeah i he mean hit the pickaxe after you you weren't up. really pulling anything of substance from around it okay you had this tube imagine this was in the wall you guys were like seeing the very end coming out yeah and you were just kind of cleaning out around it. You were really finding anything new or organic around it. You were essentially just yes. finding there, another There was thing. nothing to pull out. Right. Of the... You can't pull out the whole A line. Well, I, 
the way you ha how you explained how it looked in my mind, I assume there was like this tube that's the ley line. Yeah. And then like the extra bullshit that the ley line is feeding built up like like a bunch of I imagine like, like a imagine like a Midwest water faucet. When you leave it on, it builds up that hard that residue. residue. Yeah, and I was assuming that because it's the fucking ley line, that residue could be useful. It wasn't. Okay. It was like just exposed magic that had been dried up or used or dead and built up on the end. That is no longer there now. Now you just have this glowing rainbow is prismatic ley line pr pretty much. Like just... I don't know how we would even begin to do anything with this. <laughs> well, I am a wizard, and having a ley line kind of just end up bossing up under our house seems like a really good thing to happen. Can we use that right now? What are you saying, Seth? Okay. You healed him for 19. Alright, so, Oxford Stabilize, you guys have gathered around. Things seem to be stable. Well, I gotta regrow potatoes. Oh, and I also have some some, uh, some seeds that I should be able to make some medicinal herbs. So we can probably start producing solutions of healing. I only have like six vials though, so I can't make a bunch. Get a bunch of sand. <laughs> like, not wrong. We're gonna try to farm. I mean, what's sand but just tiny rock? <laughs> what's so if you sand? fabricate rocks into sand. <laughs> you can turn sand into glass. All right, so what are we doing, guys? What are we doing? Okay, rocks in the sand. What are you doing? And um, we at least need to make two days. We still have this, two more pillars. this fucking spy in our living room. Yep. We should. Are we... How? How are the kids? Uh, for the most part, you go and look around. They're shook. They're okay though. Oxford seemed to be the only one that actually like had anything happen, but be intended to. So, Phelan, how are you supposed to get in contact with with the, your hiree? It has a small, uh, small hut about 100 feet outside fields of Landon. Been meeting him there once every two to three days, relaying any information in the middle of the night. How far away is Landon from here? Mmm, a day or two. And when... When is the next time you're supposed to check in? Tomorrow. Well, what have you told him? Told him that uh, you guys have been making a home that not returned yet. On my next, I was going to tell him obviously you had returned and that whatever your plans were. So, um... I mean, I feel like the most obvious thing is we just send him along, follow him, and push him. That, of course, has a deadline of tomorrow. Definitely forces our hand in time timeline. We won't have time to take it a week. So. Yeah, but I can make an extra pillar if we take a long rest. It kind of speaks up. I mean, we could always maybe meet him in another two days after. Yeah, but that's... Wouldn't you suspicious not showing well. up to your check-in be suspicious? Yes. Yeah. Yes. I don't think that's. Enough. We want we want the drop. We want the element of surprise. We so I, I think I think the call is you pretend that everything is just a okay. You are none the wiser. You show up when he shows up. We're gonna try and kill him. We'll cross that. Bridge. Well, what's going to happen to me? I make it out. Then I just keep working for him. Huh, no, if, I mean, if we, if we kill him, you won't have anything to work for. Right, but if... At which point... Am I going to keep working for him? Are we going to keep up this whole charade? Yeah, I thought... I think we're not I, there to capture him. We're giving him false information to give the guy. It is, seems like such a waste, though. Because if this dude reports the wrong things to the dude, they don't know what the fuck we're doing. My part tail for a while. Yeah. And they won't and that at least buys us time where they think we're doing something else. So until they know this guy's compromised, keeping him the 
problem giving with that, false information is the best bet. The problem with that is that we have to then trust Phelan. The chicken shit. Oh, you can trust me, guys. Come on. I've run out twice. What am I going to do now? I don't have a sword. We can go buy a geist scroll. Um, it's magical contract, but he can't just break like, any This dies. fucking guy is goddamn scroll. He, he's a big fan of scrolls. He reads a lot. Wait a minute. What's your name? I can't remember. Denisine. Do you know how to cast geist? Do you know anybody that knows how to cast geist? Plenty of people, but... I mean... Depends on where you're going, How or... far away is where Arlanda is? He's now Brazine. About in two to three days. We're just there. Yeah, can you use on the animal thing to, like, send her <laughs> a message, though? Wait, does somebody have sending? Uh... I have met the girl. Oh, yeah. He... No, he was in prison oh, when she showed up. Prison? I don't know if he ever saw her or not. Uh, <laughs> I mean, Phelan went to this guy, or got hired by this guy for gold, and he's in it for gold. Correct. Why don't we just pay him? Why don't we just kill him then and just say fuck the leap? Huh? If, if we ain't gonna use him as a fucking false informant, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. let's just kill him. Yeah, it just kind of looks up. Please don't kill me. I can be useful. Then whoever he's working for is gonna. I mean, I, I that sounds know. like a good thing. I don't know if that's true. There's not. There's no. There's no reason for them to do. That. Yeah. Obviously, yeah. There's also no reason for them to monitor our fucking house either. They're, not, they're actually. I mean, we're essentially at the state. Denison just kind of chimes in. They do come here. Not saying they would. But you might not want to fight. He just kind of looks around. Around a whole house full of children. Right. Uh, Feel like that sounds like problems if we lose for 500, Dennis Dean. Okay, you already had accidents happen without an attack. I don't, I mean, the only uh, the only thing we could do is we could send Phelan along, right? I feel like we should go with Phelan. There's no way I'm trusting Phelan to go by himself, and the hang out nearby and if we can gather information we could like fucking what was that fucking book i'm gildor talking in character with bernie and we could just kill him and i make him a zombie he gets it yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I got it as well <laughs> i can't for i can't remember who we say right now we can remember he's now we can just do that i feel like we can trust the zombie I feel like the zombies can't talk, though, and I think we need Phelan to talk. Yeah, but we want to ca- you just- hmm? You want to kill the guy, why does it matter if Phelan can talk? <laughs> then, so we do want to kill the guy, because I want to kill the guy. I want to kill whoever yeah, I Yeah, that's why I'm trying to give you more scenarios to kill the guy. Let's go kill the guy, then. Let's just go follow Phelan, and then when the guy shows up to talk to Phelan, we just spring, we just fucking jump him, and we fucking kill the guy. I was like, yeah, that sounds like a good plan. Yeah, and I don't right. have to keep doing this, and then we can figure out something from there, yeah? I mean, that sounds great to me. But the, this is assuming that this guy works alone. It's possible that this guy who hired Phelan is just one of many, who probably works for the Red Council. And then then they'll realize, oh shit, that guy got compromised, and oh, uh, you know. But I don't think that's not, I don't think we can control that. We have no way of knowing that. So I don't think there's anything worth, try, worth trying to fucking plan around a bunch of shit we don't know. All we know is that tomorrow night, the guy who hired Phelan, who has Ember iconography, uh, is going to be in this specific place. Or one of us could like forge a letter and have hey, him Phelan. give it to the informant, and that'd be it. Hey Phelan, that he yeah stole. When you meet this guy. Does he does he pass any kind of? Truth ritual on you, true spell, Zone of Truth, anything like that? You should be familiar with Zone of Truth. Voice is kind of awkward. It's almost ominous. I'm not even sure if it's it's real voice. But when I do enter the room, there may be magic at work, I'm not sure. I wouldn't know it. Good know it. 
Maybe. But I would probably remember, and if I did, I don't. They are obsessed with memory. Wait a minute, wait a minute, hold up, pause. Yeah. You said memory magic. So that means there's a high chance... I was dynasty. I know. There's a high chance this guy isn't a bitch. Thinks he's a bitch? He just thinks he's a bitch. He wiped his own memory to make himself think he's or a bitch? Or somebody wiped his memory and there's a trigger and this motherfucker's a sleep raging. <laughs> Blueberry pot. No? Okay. Cast tech magic. Are you gonna kill us? Do you? Yeah. Okay. Um, <gasps> does he have magic that's he, affecting him? Yes, that is affecting him. Yeah, he seems to be under some sort of very slight effect. Can I counterspell the effect? What is, is that an option? I mean, I spell magic tomorrow. That being said, what school of magic? Oh um, God! That's that's rules written on that fucking tech magic, baby. Enchantment, mind control. I think it's mind control. Yeah. Uh -huh. I'm gonna say mind control just for we're getting a little on time, but I think it's mind control some, some or like possible that. charm. Yeah, yeah, charm. It's all enchanted. Yeah, yeah. enchant. Yeah, but you're not quite a hundred percent sure. But yeah, he has had vague parts of his memory altered. That was me who detected magic on the teeth. So I can't compare. Okay then. We're gonna kill a guy tomorrow night. Down. I'm down. You're asking me if I'm good with killing. I'm a skeleton. I mean, so ask you questions. You know I'm gonna say yes to. Hey, skeleton. Just because you're skeleton doesn't mean you're interested in killing people. That's racist. True. <laughs> but I'm also a necromancer. All it's right. not like I'm just a normal skeleton. You know, insert Will Smith. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I know you were talking about false information. Do you feel like it's beneficial or do you feel like we should think about our safety? Add an answer. I think we have a resource. If we want to kill or do whatever to this individual, but I also think that we're also somewhat in the dark. Some of the don't know. Person seems to want to know a lot about you. Why? What do you have that they need? This gem? Sure. But you didn't have it a week ago. You had no gems, you told me, a week ago. They were still looking after. So is it you they're looking after? And he just kind of turns and looks at Grendridge. He's like, or is it you they're looking at? Grendridge kind of turns, he's like, whoa, ho, ho, whoa. What do you mean, looking for me? Oh, besides that construction shit, Grendridge has, like, been here the whole time. Then it seems kind of turns right. So, like... These could these people could be because we killed those orphan tribes. But who those... else knows why you're here, or who else knows came here? The orphan trafficker we let live for some ungodly reason. Wrong. I True. He just kind of turns back and looks at Grendridge. I'm not saying I don't trust him, and Grendridge's like, "Well, fuck you too." <laughs> like, but I'm just saying. Not very many people knew you came here. If this person knows that they followed you since what? I don't know. We're kind of locally famous for killing the storm. Like, I don't think they people know. Did we like advertise we were the Moonlight Marauders? I don't remember. A little bit, but that was. And I don't know how like inconspicuous um, a group of adventurers killing a bunch of elementals in fucking town is. That's a decently small town. Yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, that makes it worse. <laughs> like, like, right. so, like, so maybe we go, maybe we... We don't approach hostile. Yeah, so we'll see if we can gather information, if things hit, hits a fan. Shit hits a fan. Yep. Our hands are forked. 
I just want you to know I'm going into combat tomorrow without, without a fourth level spell. Go secure the house. Somebody hit a fucking ley line with a pickaxe! Can we, like, can we put cones up around and get some caution tape? <laughs> you know, know those ever flames? Can you flame? <laughs> We're gonna make a sign and put one of the flames right above it. Yeah. Just one, one on either side. Don't fucking hit this thing. So at this point, you see Dennis Cini comes over. Then I guess we'll make preparations for tomorrow night. He looks at Phelan. Better not be lying. Better lead. Phelan just turns. I promise. Know where I've gone. Hold up your end and be ready. You guys turn around and Phelan goes. It's about midnight, maybe 1 a.m. now. Everybody's starting to go to bed. Phelan goes and kind of gets tucked in. Grendridge just kind of sits next to him and makes sure he ties him up to the side of this almost like pole that's like a staple of a structure inside of your guys' building. Grendridge, I'll sleep with him for the night and uh, just make sure nothing funny happens. The rest of you, we prepare for the night ready for tomorrow. You guys now can take the night and any preparations going into tomorrow. Get ready for your meeting with this individual. I want to ask a lot. Yeah. Did you not realize that this guy was sneaking? Honestly, I try to stay away from anything that requires a blade. Sneaks away, so be it. It's one less thing I need to worry about. You guys want to handle him? Fine. I'm trying to take care of the house, the orphans. We appreciate what you do. I was just sorry for hiring a spy. I didn't know. I promise. Don't let it happen again. I know. I know. Believe me. I won't hire anyone. <laughs> and then you hear Grendridge. Yeah. yeah. Let's not. So you guys get ready. I detect magic. No, I haven't like ever put anything in it. You guys get ready for the night. You gather yourselves uh, and yeah, in the room with Balin and, and uh, Grendridge. Uh, Orum is just gonna be like. So I'm imagining they're like in bed somewhere. I'm just gonna be like, if this is Phelan, I'm just gonna be sitting <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> in Sentry's rest. Right? I don't even know. Gotcha. Just next to him, just, just like, hey. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I don't go unconscious. I'm right. looking at this motherfucker all goddamn night long. Alright, so you guys. Four hours of sleep next until read. everybody's up reading Book of Hate. Alright, so you go through that. Um, that one's a little bit bigger, so I don't need to require a roll quite yet. Um, so you guys gather yourselves, rest, and after a long trip and a little bit of fighting and a lot of information gathered, you guys rest for the night in preparation for a big day ahead of you. That's where we're going to end today's session. And we'll pick up here next week with you guys meeting this inconspicuous individual and uh, hopefully coming out where you guys want to be. But yeah. Let me uh, forget next Thank week. you all for watching. Until next week.